Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of The Secrets of Magic, a special 10-part actual play show here on the Paizo Twitch. Uh, I am your host and benevolent GM for today's game. I'm Jason Bullman, I'm the director of game design at Paizo, and I'm pumped! I'm so pumped because that intro is awesome! I love it. So, uh, but before we get started here today, I want to toss it around the horn and let everybody introduce themselves and their characters. We will start with you, Xander. Take it away. Hello. Yes, I'm Xander Genre, and I am playing Ingot, the dwarf wizard, the crystal wizard. Uh, yeah, very excited to uh, spread my abjuration magic all over my party members so that they don't get hurt. I, I, we'll see how well that goes for you. <laughs> Abjuration. Yes, yes. Plenty oh. of that. Michelle, you're up next. <laughs> I'm not going to spread nothing nowhere. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, hello, my name is Michelle Wynn Bradley. It is I. Uh, but I am playing today Hachi, who is a Kitsune witch and has a familiar named Bug, which last episode some people didn't know, they couldn't see in the shot because it's kind of little here. But uh, he's a little like oh, Chinese yeah. serpent dragon guy. So he has little paws. But he doesn't have, I think he has like tiny legs. They're wee, but he's, uh -huh. you know, he's cool. He's sort of. He's not actually a bug. I call him Bug because his real name is yeah. He's got some crazy demonic name that like cannot be pronounced so by cool. uh, mortal tongues. Is my is what uh -huh. I think is going on. Or Hachi doesn't care. Uh, one of those uh -huh. two things is very true. <laughs> and I'm very excited to be back here today. Yeah, look at him. Look at a Bug and then Hachi. Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> Little legs, Adorable. Like, spends, like a dragon spends, corgi. Spends most of his time oh. curled up around around your shoulders, right? I want one. Yeah. It's true. yeah. <laughs> evil all look. right <laughs> hey 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 it's london carlisle um i'm here playing don oom um he is a magus a half elf magus um and he's a gambler he's a gambling man he likes mm -hmm. to have fun he likes to fight some monsters with these great people here um and he's also ready to s spell strike you heard it here first yeah <laughs> that's gonna be the move <laughs> for these next few episodes so stay tuned yeah, we're, we're working yeah, on that fight, catchphrase you for you. We're destroy. Gonna, yeah, we're yeah. going to start calling you Don Boom. <laughs> yeah, Don yeah, Boom yeah, in yeah. the chat. Yeah. Don Boom. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Bonnie Gordon. I am playing the Halfling Summoner Feral. And you can always see my Eidolon Fang by my side. Uh, it's. I can't wait to uh, play more in mud and... Uh, Play more <laughs> with my wolf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, there he is. Oh, every he one of you continues to get dirtier and dirtier every time she heals you. It's a, it's a, it's an ongoing struggle. Um, but it I'm, trying to build up, I'm building up your immune system. You have to play in the dirt. <laughs> well. Now that everyone's introduced themselves, I think I'll do a little bit of a recap, as I always do. So when we last left our intrepid band of adventurers. Four scholars, four enigmas, as they are called, were sent from the College of Mystery in Absalom to the tiny desert town of Zaltir. Located on the border between Thuvia and Osirian, this tiny desert town is entirely unremarkable, or at least it was, <laughs> until just a few weeks ago. Rumors have begun spreading that the the people in this town have all started developing magical talents. They didn't go to school. They're not a bunch of sorcerers. They just all suddenly learned how to use magic one day. And frankly, their powers have been growing. The College of Mystery in Absalom is one of the oldest schools of magical learning in the inner sea region. And uh, its graduates are referred to as enigmas. And sometimes they pull together a, uh, a conclave of these enigmas and send them out to, you know, do research and study on behalf of the school. Our four adventurers are one such research group. They've been sent from Absalom to this tiny desert town to discover what's going on, what's happening. How is it happening? And to lend aid should the people of the tiny town need some help. 
The journey was relatively uneventful until they put, got to within, you know, a mile or two of town, and they were beset upon by a number of gigantic scorpions that came bursting up out of the desert sands. They defeated them <laughs> uh, rather spectacularly, causing more than one of them to just literally explode uh, before making their way <laughs> hey. into town. They met a few uh, interesting uh, characters in town, including a very young girl uh, who seemed to be chasing uh, a tiny little uh, fiery uh, dragon moat uh, named uh, Imra. Uh, they met a uh, bard who was unable to speak, who they later learned his name was Rostevan. And then they continued onward to make their way into the center of town, seeing a shop close up. You know, they, they arrived at dusk and they went into the uh, the only real inn and tavern in town, the Drowsy Camel. Once inside the Drowsy Camel, they met uh, the owner and operator of the Drowsy Camel. That would be Nerissa. And uh, Nerissa uh, was holding her own in a busy tavern, uh, serving all the people, getting them their drinks and food. The food, by the way, being supplied by a restaurant next door. There's like a hole in the wall between the two establishments, and they just pass food <laughs> through. Uh, you're not sure if that they pass drinks elixir. through. You haven't seen the... <laughs> yeah, you haven't seen the drinks go through the other way. Yeah, but the garlic elixirs and trouts and other other delicacies local to the region that made everyone far too hungry since we're playing this at dinner time. Uh, and <laughs> uh, you managed to, uh, you know, get a table and get some food and you were served by some of Nerissa's uh, animated servants. She has these three stone statues of these kind of drowsy looking camels that are wandering around taking orders. They're not talking, they just have a little uh, uh, pad on top that you can fill out your order on a, on a slip of, 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 of reed. And then uh, she takes the order and, and fills it up and uh, sends it back out to you. Um, and the place is also being attended to by a bunch of animate brooms that are dancing around. Anyway, the entire place was kind of a magical affair. The party tucked in, had some food, listened to some rumors, heard some stories about what people thought was going on. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let the players <laughs> continue those discussions. Uh, yeah, there's <laughs> birds and all sorts of wild tales. And uh, the evening went rather well. The, the, the group had food, they had drink, they were taking it easy until things suddenly went wrong. It was toward the end of the night. Most of the locals had, uh, had already left and uh, there was only a few folks still down in the common room, uh, your group among them. And Nerissa was attempting to get one of her camel servants unstuck. It had gotten kind of stuck in a chair and table, and she was trying to help it, and it was being uncooperative. And the thing suddenly kicked her, kicked out, one of its legs kicked out, and hit her in the head, and she fell to the floor. At that moment, all of the animated creatures went kind of Berserk. They just started running around the place, attacking everything and everyone in sight. And that is where we left off. And I think that is where we are going to pick things up. So I'm going to go ahead and take us back to the map of the drowsy camel here. Oh, wow. And uh, this has just <laughs> occurred. So you see Nerissa uh, down, down here. She is next to a camel. And there's another uh -huh. camel, and there's oh, no. yet another camel, and Too let's many. not forget <laughs> the two animate brooms that are also in the room. <laughs> and last but not least, the silverware from the end of the bar has risen up in a whirlwind, a virtual tornado of silverware, and it is swarming down around Whoa. at the end of the bar. <laughs> this is like the so night that we are guest musical number! <laughs> 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 so that's what we got going on here uh i'm gonna go ahead and add some turns for these uh no one here was stealthing or doing anything unusual so this is going to be a straightforward perception check for your initiative so why don't i get everyone to bounce me a perception check and just hold on to the number until i've got myself ready here i gotta i gotta roll some initiative for a whole bunch of angry <laughs> animated objects <laughs> just take your time <laughs> yes yeah, roll 20 strikes again already <laughs> for me. No, no. Uh-oh. It, it did pass nice right. to me. Yeah. Let me pop out the 
room here. Roll initiative for that. Oh, that's oh no! Bad. Oh. Beware the brooms, wow. they go quick. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was a natural 20. It may have been a natural 20, yeah, indeed. Oh, uh, yeah. The brooms. oh no. Let's see, that's that. And then I will go and get my silverware swarm as well. The deadly, deadly silverware swarm. Nobody wants to get caught in that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go around and collect everyone's initiative score before I sort these out here. Uh, Hachi, what did you what did you get? 16. A 16. Uh, Pharrell, what do you have? Bonnie? It's you, Bunny. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was, I was, I was looking at the thing. Uh, mm, no that's worries. my character. Uh, uh, with my perception added, a uh, thirty total. Thirty. There we go. There we go. That's yep. a, that's a very good. That's a very good initiative. Don. Yes, it um, is. What do you got? That is a twenty-six. Twenty-six. Ooh. Also very solid. Ooh. And ingot. What do you have? A twenty-nine. 29, also very good. See, those numbers weren't so bad. You be, you all beat most of them. So, yeah, no, it's it's going to be great. All right, here. This is, this is going <laughs> to work out super. go wrong? Yeah, no, I can't <laughs> imagine what might go wrong. All right. So, top of the order here this first round. Farrell, you are sitting there at this table next to Fang. These animated objects have suddenly gone berserk. What do you do? Uh, panic! No, uh, I look at the brooms and be like, this is why I never clean! This is why my housekeeping skills are ignored! Um, uh, so immediately, Farrell's first thought is, um, to get to Nerissa to try and heal her, because obviously this is happening because she is knocked out. So I would like to immediately, um, in initiate, uh, my act together ability with mm, my, okay. uh, with Wing. So we okay. can kind of do this together because I want, for my actions, I definitely want to move to Narissa. Okay. I'm not sure how many actions okay. that will take. I don't know how, how far she is, if I can get there in one action. Um, well, with um, Finn. she is, she's a good ways away. She's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. She's at least 30 feet away from you, Pharrell. Right. Okay. So... I mean, that would obviously take a full action. Or could I jump on Fang and just <laughs> ride him over? Well, you do have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you do have the ability to uh, uh, mount your your wolf, right? It does, it does have do. the ability well, to throw you around, I do. Well, he's a medium creature, right? but I'm small, so I'm already able yep. to do that. I also I also have the ability to uh, turn him into steed form, which I don't need to use. That basically just means he changes size, which I don't need him to do. Uh, sure. We but, just but the have been under the assumption that I ride him. Yeah, that, that evolution means that when you're riding uh, Fang, you both don't lose actions. Because there's the, the, the book, Secrets of Magic, uh, has a uh, number of rules in it about riding sentient creatures. Um, because your Eidolon is a sentient creature. So it gets real weird when you're, when you're trying to ride around on someone. Uh, but in this <laughs> case, you and your Eidolon have it mastered. So you could use uh, I would like to ability. use Steve Form then. Yes. Now, what you could do is you could use your ability to spend one action for you to hop okay. on to Fang and then have okay. Fang spend two actions to charge across the room and make an attack, which would take you with. Perfect. I would like to get to Nerissa. So in order to do that, it looks like I'm going to have to attack this broom with Fang. <laughs> and lucky for me, Fang loves to play catch. So he's going <laughs> to love this. Um, I want him to attack this br broom, and in doing so, I want to initiate the um, the attack that he has, which is, uh, well, no, I, I guess I don't want to use my focus yet, my focus one. No, but no, you're, I'll just have you're, him attack. I'll just have him attack your normally. Beast, yeah, yeah, your beast has uh, uh, the ability charge. to charge and attack. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'm going to jump on him and then use Beast Charge, which takes two actions, which means he'll be yep. rushed forward using his momentum to increase to increase the power of his attack. Correct. Um, so um, yep. the way that's going to work is you use Act Together, which says mm -hmm. one of you gets to take one action and the other one gets to take Ooh. one, two, three actions, right? So Fang. Fang is going to use two actions while you take one. The one you are taking exactly. is to hop on Fang's back, so we'll just go mm -hmm. and, uh, for the time being, I'm just going to move you off to the side, so that we you're on top of Fang okay. right now, but we'll move you, you yes. we'll move you out of the way. And then, Perfect. Fang, you can move up to double Fang's speed, and Fang has a very good speed, if I recall correctly. Oh, yes. 25 feet? Well, yeah. 25. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to whisper in his ear and go, Time to play fetch, Fang, and make him charge into the into the broom to All right. attack. Sure. So uh, go ahead and move Fang to wherever you want to position Fang. And it is he is charging in a directly straight line, which means I yep. get a plus one circumference bonus on my attack roll. Yep, you get a plus one circumstance on the attack roll, yep. I mean, sir, did I say yeah, circumference? Circumference. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, we're playing know. in circles. I wasn't <laughs> going to say anything, that, yeah. but it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. What is the, what is the area get, of this circle? You, yeah. you only <laughs> need a circumference bonus when you, make a, you, when you run all the way around. And then... <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. All right. That so, is a 14 uh, for my attack roll. Uh, technically a 15. All right. And uh, so, against a broom. So that is a 15 plus Fang's attack bonus, um, which is which is not going to be small, right? Oh, well, I saw he has an attack of plus 12, but I thought that was only with the focus spells. Oh, no, 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 that's with Beast Charge. Oh, that's me. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, he's using oh, yeah. his jaw. That's plus 12. He is a powerful little wolf. Uh, yeah. That is a 26. 26, uh, actually a 27 because you get the plus one. So uh, right. that My is not only going that is not only going to hit the Crit. animated broom that is going to exceed its armor class by 10. So that is a yes. critical hit. Yes. This poor broom. All get it wanted to going. do was sweep up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, uh, Bonnie, go ahead and roll damage for, uh, for Fang's bite attack. And just okay. double the final result. Ooh. Double the fun. Seven, yeah. 14. 14 points of damage. So you hop on Fang's back. Fang darts straight across the room at this broom, chomps out with the teeth, gets a hold of the broom's handle, and just bites it in half. One, the, <laughs> the, the head of the broom goes flying off in one direction, the stick goes flying off in the other, and the broom is no more and i'm actually going to delete the other one because i think that one was the one that had initiative okay um i'll, so. I'll have narissa add that to our tab <laughs> <laughs> so you have completely destroyed that broom that was two of your actions because remember you used act together mm. so you yes. and fang still have one action left one of you can take it you could hop off and go over to Narissa. You could create more healing mud. What do you feel like doing? I'm gonna hop off and head to Narissa, uh, and I'll and I'll right. make some more healing mud on my next turn. Uh, but I'm I right. would like to uh, have it to where if I'm hopping off, I want to keep Fang close by so he can uh, attack while I heal uh, right. further on. So in the, Fang is in the Fang scene. is actually gonna have to stay there this round oh. just because you're oh, out of okay. action. Okay, I'm just moving. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, you can you can hop off Fang and end up next to Narissa, but but Fang's gonna have to stay right. there. Okay, that is the Good end boy. of. Feral's turn. Ingot, we are over yes. to you. What do you got? Ingot is seeing this conflict happen and uh, is mystified by the mutiny of the silverware. And so <laughs> for one action, he's going to dive underneath this table that we were sitting at uh, and get some cover. Uh, and so okay. I'll just move him up there. Uh, and then uh, one action, he's going to cast the cantrip shield. He'll grab one of his crystals. And again, no hands necessary, but a shield protects him. And as he focuses a little bit more, he casts a uh, protective ward once again, emanating out this uh, this sort of field 
from underneath the table. Both of these are one action spells and that will complete his turn for now. Underneath the table. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've, I've gone, I've gone and hidden you underneath the table. And uh, <laughs> while I was doing that, I'm sorry. I kind of spaced, I missed. Uh, so you cast protective ward. That was one yep. and you cast shield. All yep. Right. Um, Okay, and that was Protective Ward. I think we might have said the wrong spell last week. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I, I think that was on me, though. I think I, oh. I said uh, I said the wrong spell. But Protective Ward is the one that slowly bubbles out from you, correct? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it starts okay. with five-foot radius and then emanates out. And that's yeah. a plus one to AC of everybody that's in it. Yep. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um Okay, so uh, that was Ingot's turn. Dond Um, what do you got for me? With his sword already out, um, Don is gonna tr like kind of follow Ingot with his eyes as Ingot goes under the table, <laughs> and he makes eye contact and says, "Ingot, yes, Don is threatened." And then he's oh. gonna go and try to swing at the uh, broom uh, that's right there uh, next to it. All right. Well, uh, with my uh, short sword there, let's see what we got. So this is just a this is just a standard short sword attack. St yeah, uh, yeah, standard strike here. Um, All right. That will be magic go boom. <laughs> <laughs> that is a twenty-two. A twenty-two against hit. an animated broom is going to <laughs> easily hit. Uh, that is uh, not a critical hit, but it is a hit. So go ahead and roll damage, and we'll see what you do to this here, this poor broom. Your blade dashes fighters. out, slams into the handle, and... 10 damage! 10 nice. damage! Cuts the handle right in half. The broom is destroyed. The, the, oh. the evil, vile, animated brooms have been defeated. <laughs> Now you can all rest and return to Absalom, the ter the courageous heroes you are. Wait, no, wait. Oh, there's still other monsters. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, at least we have the silverware. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, the uh -oh. mutiny of the silverware is upon you. It is the evil silverware's turn. All right. Let's see what the swarm of silverware is going to do. I hate it. It's so big. <laughs> it's definitely going to hurt All us right. bad. Uh, let's see here. Has a uh, speed of 20. So, by the way, there is this other uh, character in the bar here. By the way, I'm not sure if you've noticed him. This is that uh, Chalaxian, like, nobleman mm -hmm. adventurer who's staying in the nice room. Uh, right, that you tried and, to gamble yeah. your... <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 Um, so the uh, the silverware doesn't know, you know, right from wrong. It just moves sure. towards the nearest person. Oh. So it is yeah. going to move at this nobleman, and it is going to attack. Um, if so he dies, we call here. dibs on the room. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, it's no, it's mine. I feel like it was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I, it I is going for it. I it is going to move to there, and the first thing it does is it just slices at him with forks and knives. That's going to do four points of damage to this uh, to this ow, ow. this character. He never got his name. Uh, and the second thing it's going to do, <laughs> oh, it does get he does get a reflex save. Let me go ahead and roll that. Let's see. It's hard to get names, but I'm learning. <laughs> I'm not good at asking. <laughs> I saw us all flip our notes over to see if just we got see. his name. <laughs> yeah, I, I, get, I flip my just heard, and I heard other people's pages flip. <laughs> the nobleman so has no flip. name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, yeah, the nobleman is not giving you his name. Uh, so the, the Civil War Swarm is going to uh, strike at him. He does manage to dodge uh, a good portion of it. Um, so he's not going to take quite as much damage. And then it's going to use an ability called stick a fork in it. Uh, oh. and it's going to attempt oh. to pin him. Uh, he must attempt a reflex save or get pinned to the table by forks and knives and whatnot. Uh, so cool. let me go ahead and do that. Whoever named uh, this, this is, move is great. That 20, is actually points. 
that's going to make it for him as well. I rolled an eight, but that is going to come out to be enough. So it's going to be a success, uh, which means he's basically kind of pinned to the stool. So the, the forks <laughs> and knives pinned his cloak, his like fine chellish overcloak to the stool that he was standing on. So now he's dragging it around and will take a minus 10 movement penalty until he uh, spends a moment to free himself. You know, Don Doom, I think I might have rushed past your turn too quickly. I think you still had one action left. Um, if you wanted to move, you could go ahead and do that. You had to draw your sword and attack. So I think you still mm -hmm. have one one action left. So if you wanted to move somewhere, I'd let you do that. I did, yeah. Um, what Don is going to do, Don is going to not move far, but just kind of back over here next to uh, Hachi. Okay. Get a little space, but still in the line of the uh, of the silverware. Uh, the mutiny right. of silverware, if you will. <laughs> right. the, the, yeah, the the, the, the the treacherous evil silverware. Okay, so uh, that is the end of the treacherous evil silverware. We we fixed up Don Doom missing an action there. Hachi, we are down to you. Those statues really still wanna... haven't gone yet. Yes, that's. I'm a little worried about that. Okay, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna use my reaction, which I probably should have said this at the beginning, but let's just do it now. Um, I get recognized spell. As a reaction, Ooh. it's uh, one of my feats. So if I could just quickly figure out what is going on here. And I know so I can that, roll to make... That, that's typically used when you see a spell being cast. Are you trying to figure out what the spell is that animated these things? Is that what you're trying to suss out? Um, yeah, that's keeping them, like that's making them uh, okay. violent. So, because before well, they were... You know, yeah, you won't have to spend a uh, reaction for that. You can spend an action for that to use Seek and use like Arcana right. or Occult oh, or, right, yeah. you know, one of those skills to try and figure out what, what's going on here. So if what, what skill do you want to try and use? Because different skills will give you different information. Um, let's go with Seek. Let's try something new. Seek Arcana? Seek Yeah, occult? Arcana, yes. Arcana? Uh, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's, let's do a cult. I mean, a cult's I, a little easier for me. Yeah, a cult, a cult is better for you, I think. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Uh, wow. Um, that's a nat one. But you know, oh, plus no. 14. A nat, oh. A nat, a, a nat one? You're pretty sure oh, wow. these things are uh, spawned <laughs> from some other plane and have come here to destroy you. They are clearly animated by devil spirits. <laughs> okay everyone just be aware these are probably related to bug and sometimes you know when bug gets really mad or really hungry like other spirits will come up from the uh, the occult world and i you know i can't control it but just, just deal with it i'm gonna go ahead and cast um dispel magic let's see nice. if that works on the forks okay. please and actually on the on the camel on the camel closest to me because it has not gone yet <laughs> mm. all right so, so Dispel here, Magic here. is, when you cast Dispel Magic, what you're doing is you're doing a counteract check. So mm -hmm. the counteract check, uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, roll me a d20. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yep, 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 <laughs> doing yep. great. And uh, you are going to, let's see, I believe you get to... It's going to be against the DC of the spell, uh, mm -hmm. the caster's DC for this particular spell. And okay, so what did you roll? Let's see what you got. I a rolled a seven. seven. Do we get to add anything to that though? Yeah, you get to add your level. Um, yeah, okay. no, no, you get to oh. you get to add your level. Um, it's thirteen. Uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. So 13. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, no. Yeah. Well. <laughs> so you throw it to spell magic, but that roll is not going to cut it. So you, uh, work your magic and attempt to undo the magic that is animating one of these camel statues. And for a moment, it slows down for just a second, but the, the counteract was not enough. You, you're kind of surprised by that. You are a skilled and powerful practitioner of magic that this bartender's animated camel statue could resist your power seems unusual. There's something really, really strange every, going on here. Everyone here is a devil. That's it. That must be it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how they burned the town down. All right. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> with sacred purpose. <laughs> Sorry, the, the, the skill check told us to. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> that is the end of Hachi's turn. Uh, next up, the statues go. All right. So here's what we're going to do. The first statue uh, is going to uh, stomp up onto the table here. Uh, I did and Oh no! <laughs> Wait a minute. Ig ig ignoring Narissa, it goes to attack you because you are conscious, and uh, it is okay. going to attempt to hit you with a hoof. Defend a hoof. summoner. A hoof. Oh, I guess I should wait till you attack me because you might fail. <laughs> So uh, I rolled pretty poorly. That was only a seven. That only comes out to a total of 18. I'm going to wager that misses. It actually does. Woohoo! Never mind. I don't need I don't need you, Fang. Yeah, I I'm think, so I think sure. you, Yeah, the, the ability is one you probably have to use on your turn, too, if, I, if it's the one I think I'm thinking of, because it takes an action. Um, the camel oh. is going to attempt to hit you again with the second fist. Uh, and that's going to miss as well. The second attack, I rolled better, but uh, because of the multiple attack penalty, it's only going to oh, be yeah. a 14. So the camel the camel kind of gets up on the table, and it's all awkward, and the table's being cracked and broken, and it tries to hit you with its hooves, uh, but it just does not manage to hit you. Camels have hooves, right? They do, right? Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Yes. Is that wrong? Yeah, they they're like furry. Right? The yeah. Pumps. yeah like I, I'm going to the... assume. Yeah. yeah, it's like the... All right, the... moving on. Right. Yeah, they're, they're walking up. You know. Yeah. Everybody, do, do hooves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hooves. All right, anyway. Uh, did you know that a, a horse's legs are sort of like its finger? The, the hoof is actually yeah. like its yeah. nail? Well, it's just yeah. the finger. It's just the I hand mean, with the head. Okay, continue. But, right. I mean, yeah, notably, never mind. <laughs> Everyone comes <laughs> to our Paizo streams to learn about <laughs> camel feet. <laughs> yeah. All That's right. What we're here for. So... All right. Uh, <laughs> hoof facts. That's right. We're taking a break for hoof facts. All right. Um, oh, boy. It's like car facts, but for your camel. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> terrible. Okay. Uh, the, the, the second uh, camel is going to stomp right up to Fang, and it is going oh. to attack with its hoof. Here we go. Armor class of 30. I can't imagine that that's going to be a miss. Um, so Fang it, is going to take a hit. Um, this is going yeah. to do 14 points of damage. Ooh. Uh, but Pharrell, you and Fang share a pool of hit points, so that hurts you just as much as it hurts Fang. Ouch! And then the second attack... Because it gets three, no. it gets three actions. Spent one to move, second to attack, third to attack again. Here it comes. Armor class ah. of twenty. Ah, he, he has an fang? armor class of twenty-two. No. Nice. Ah, curses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, the hoof is going to come slamming down into the floor of the tavern, uh, and uh, uh, but it manages. Uh, fang manages to dodge out of the way. All right. Last but not least, we've got this other camel statue. It's going to come charging up to the end of the table. Ingot, you have cover because you crawled underneath the table. We can barely see you under there, but we can see your nameplate. So uh, the camel is going to go ahead and attack you right there. Uh, cover is going to give you a bonus to your AC. Um, Sweet. We'll say of two. Um, okay. Oh, no. Armor class of 29, though, isn't going to care about your cover. That is going Oof. to hit. Take Even 11 with points my... of damage. Yo. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, it's all, it doesn't add up to enough. Yeah, you get the, you get the, what do you got? Plus one from shield. And then plus, plus two one. from the cover. And, and then from plus protective one from ward. protective ward. Yeah. So you were at a bonus of plus four. Would you like to expend the shield? You can shield oh. block as a reaction if you like, and that, that will reduce point. the amount of damage you take by what five? Five, five. might be more. I think that's the hardness of the magical shield for the cantrip. 
Yeah, I'm just looking to see. Raise, no, you're third level, so it, it will prevent ten. Yes, I will block with a shield. All right. <laughs> and get, we'll do this. Um, all right, so instead of taking a terrible hoof wound, you instead only take one point of damage. Yes, yes, and get like <laughs> this. Shield, your shield pops. You cannot cast it again <sighs> during this fight. Yes. Um, okay, the camel is going to spend its third and final action to attack you a second time. Here it comes. That is a natural one. Yeah! It uh, raises its hoof up to attempt to slam into you, but it just hits the table and ends up slipping and, and kind of stumbling about. It does not Stupid come camel. anywhere near hitting you. All right. <laughs> that is that. That is the Ooh. end of the statue's turn. Next up, we are going... Oh, sorry. Bottom of the order. Our nobleman here is going oh. to move. He's going to drag the stool with him. I'll <laughs> oh, deal with no. that in a second. Uh, and he is going to charge back here. And he's going to move to there uh, as he tries desperately to get away. And he's going to drag a stool with him, so we'll go ahead and move a stool. All right, there we go. Uh, making a mess of this place. All right. Uh, he is going to move over there, and that is the end of his turn. Top of the order, Pharrell. You've got an animate statue in front of you that looks rather angry. <laughs> and I am also angry because I took a beating from Fang. Uh, I'm going to look up at, the, at this um, camel and say... Go ahead, make my hump day, and shoot no. lightning bolt from my hand. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you're you're going to unleash a lightning bolt. Um, Is all right, that so bad? I believe. <laughs> yeah, well, no, it's, uh, no. It's bad for <laughs> them. <laughs> it's, exactly, it's, it's bad for them. <laughs> yes, I figured. Well, here's here's my thought process. I cannot heal Narissa. Until this camel is out of the way. That is So fair. I will do that. All right. So I'm going to need to make a reflex save. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and roll that. Okay. Uh-oh. You got to be joking me. Natural 20. Ooh. So you're telling me this camel dodges my lightning bolt from one <laughs> foot away? <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid the camel... <laughs> Like in a in a weird, how did it even do that? <laughs> Somehow manages to duck out of the way. It as you're firing the lightning bolt, it turns to the side, and because it's dromedary, the lightning bolt goes right between the two humps. <laughs> does it uh, save for half, or does it not take any damage? It took no damage. Whoa! The natural twenty is going to be a critical oh, success. Yeah. The lightning bolt goes zooming right past it, and it takes this is, no damage. This is more embarrassing than when I used my halfling sling to do that rock, and it just lands on the ground in front of the <laughs> scorpions. Uh, now, was that was that part of act together? Because you could then have Fang oh. attack behind you. Oh, actually, yeah. I wanted to... I, I'm so sorry. I have to announce that every turn, correct? Yeah, please do. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I yes. figured you're I using it. It's, have... it's, it's, the, it's the best thing for you to do, yeah. I understand. Yeah, I assumed once <laughs> I was in play, but you're right. It's every turn. I have to announce it at the beginning of the turn. Yes, we are doing act together. Apparently, my lightning bolt doesn't matter. So uh, <laughs> I would like Fang to attack, and I would like uh, for him to move and attack the one that is near me and Narissa. Okay. Because... Um, so, yeah. I cannot heal until this camel's gone. So here's what you can do. You could spend the act together, the extra action from act together. You could have Fang move over. And then with your third and final action, you could have Fang attack. Because what I wanted to do is with his attack, um, have him do a uh, beast charge again. Or I guess that's two actions. I yeah, I think that. you're going to be one action short to pull that off. You'd have to wait till well, next beast round. Charge it says he run he rushes forward using his momentum to increase the power of his attack. So Beast Charge yeah. technically is part of his move. So he has two actions. So Beast Charge could technically be yeah. the move and the attack together. Yeah, the only problem is your spell takes two actions and Beast Charge takes two as well. So you can't use well. Act Together and get both of them because one person only gets one action with Act Together. So you can't then add it to a, another action. The the game won't let you do that. But that's that's I'll one of the tricks of playing a 
Right? It's one of the tricks of playing a summoner is is kind of puzzling together how to make all your actions work. We'll get there. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. uh, I, but you can totally move and attack. You just won't get the bonus one. Right? I will do that. I mean, then I'll have him move and oh. uh, use his claw attack. All right. Uh, so okay. So gonna, go ahead and, and move him over to that chair space. That's leap. fine. Yep. And use his claw. Um, the claw. <laughs> and he wrote, right. ooh, Camel good claw. job. Camel claw. Camel claw, yeah. 16. Is that our new seltzer drink we're going to make in the town? In Seltzer? That is no. a 38 total. Yeah. 38. Or 28, sorry. Oh, wait. 28, yeah. yeah 16 plus 12 is 28. <laughs> the math. Yeah, no worries. Uh, all right. So a 28 is going to hit. It is just shy of a crit. Uh, but it Ooh. is going to hit, so go ahead and roll damage. Okay. 1d6. Uh, that is seven points of damage. Seven points of damage. Let me take a look at my hardness. Okay. So Fang uh, uh, swipes at this statue, and because it's made of stone, the, uh, the, the hit does not do nearly as much damage as you might think. Um, in fact, it only does a scratch. This barely looks like it hurt the statue at all. But did it all right. make it lose its balance on the table? <laughs> Not quite, no. Uh, Ingot, you yes. are up next. First of all, Ingot is going to spend one action to continue concentrating on Protective Ward and increase the area of the spell by five feet. Oh, uh, sure. And then for the second action, Ingot is going to take inspiration from Hachi. Uh, and Ingot pulls out this sort of see-through crystal. Uh, it's, it's relatively thin. And as Ingot looks through it, he's going to aim it at the uh, fork NATO. <laughs> and uh, this is his, <laughs> Ingot's dispel magic. It sort of targets oh, it, right. and he snaps it in half. All right. So I'll roll for... That's yeah, okay. going to be a counteract check. Right. So I rolled an 11, plus my level of 6 is 17. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Yep. There it is. Okay. Um, it's all an right. expensive spell, so, please. <laughs> and you cast it as a second level spell, correct? Second level, yeah. Is it third? Yeah. Okay. The silverware... Clatters to the ground and stops moving. You have dispelled whatever magic was animating it. The silverware literally just kind of, it was spinning around and all of a sudden it sounded like somebody just dumped out the silverware drawer because it all just clatters and falls to the ground, uh, making quite a bit of a mess. All right. Uh, as, that as soon as that happens, that. Yeah. under the table, Ingot turns to Hachi and says, once again, your teachings, they, they have led us to success. <laughs> oh, I am very impressed. That was a, a, a literal, like, satanic devil that you just dispelled. <laughs> and also, I'm not under the table. I'm, like, sort of above the table. I don't go under <laughs> things. Thank you. <laughs> I, I hear so, it crash, and I turn and go, what the fork? Okay. Oh. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Really, really, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I, I just look at Hachi, a, and I'm gonna I, have to I, start awarding pun points. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pun points. Oh, yeah. I look at Hachi, and I'm just like, okay, so I guess Bug is now satisfied. <laughs> I mean, they didn't eat anything, though. I think that's the mm -hmm. point. They have to devour souls, so maybe they'll come back. Unclear. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, you never, we'll, you we'll, never know. You never know. We'll handle it. Uh, so. Ingot, you cast the spell, you expand, you concentrated on the other spell, so your turn is over. Dund um, it is now your turn. Great. Um, Hachi, do you mind if I like pass through your space and just get on the <laughs> other side of that bench? Wow. Okay, we're all getting real close, real fast. Yeah, I take a little, <laughs> a little step back. I, I do not like, yeah. I, like I don't want to touch the wall though, so I'm just sort of like uh -huh. in between. Okay. Uh, well, I'll carefully <laughs> step around. Move through other 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 friendly allies spare spaces, but it is always good to ask. <laughs> yeah, of just, course, of course. I'm gonna pass right through. Yeah, I'm just coming <laughs> right over here. 
Um, <laughs> so um, with two, with the two actions left, I'm going to uh, spell strike, and the spell uh-uh. I'm going to use <laughs> is acid arrow. As I'm looking at the stone, All right. nice, and this this burning s- just begins to start to rise up. So let me All try. Right. That. Okay, so you uh, you you know wave your hands and pointed your blade, and all of a sudden it begins to smoke and hiss and bubble as the acid coats your blade, and you swing it. That is a seventeen plus fifteen, thirty-two. Thirty-two. Ooh, ooh. Well, that's that's going to hit, crit. and it's going to exceed crit, my crit, armor crit. class by ten again. Your blade goes Let's slamming into this <sighs> statue. Uh, hitting it dead on. That (laughs) is going to be a critical hit again. Uh, That's your second spell strike and your your second uh, critical hit with spell strike. Make them count. Yeah. Uh, So that is going to do, you know, go ahead and roll your your damage for the attack. Okay. Yep. So the damage uh, normally would be, so that's uh, 11, um, plus uh, D6 of persistent acid damage. Nice, nice, so nice. So the, the, the acid damage will be dealt on its turn if it survives, but we'll worry about that <laughs> okay, then. Gotcha. You do okay, get yeah. to do 3D8 acid damage right now. Yeah, on top that's the of 11. The, oh, that's the 11. Okay, how much did the weapon do, though? The weapon was... Get well. let me get, yep. Yep, yep, yep. The weapon, so 11 and then 10. 21. Wow. So 21, you do 42 points of damage. Wow. <laughs> Am I still alive? How many HP does a stone camel have? I wonder. Don Boom. Don it boom. explodes. Oh. Once again. <laughs> The statue just shatters. Your blade strikes it, goes right through. Uh, acid splashes all over it. The camel kind of stumbles about as the acid scorches and burns it. And after just like two seconds, all that's left is a <laughs> melted pile of stone <laughs> sitting on the floor. Yeah. Uh, so. And lastly, I like I like one of those pun points. <laughs> there are no laws <laughs> when you're Probably drinking camel out. claws. Hey! <laughs> a slogan. Oh boy! <laughs> We're taking this from Star Trek. <laughs> this is our thing now. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, because of the the camel. Oh, all right. The yeah, all right. Okay. So, <laughs> mo- moving right along. Okay. Uh, that was Don Doom. Man, that spell strike is is brutal. I need to ask someone at work if it's too late to nerf that. <laughs> no, yes, it is. Did you print the it. books already? Because if so, probably it's too late. <laughs> you had you it. Have one there. Yeah, you have two there. Uh, <laughs> it's too late. It's been writing. Yeah, Just post it. Just post it. In. It's fine. It seems. It seems Crits real. Crits are good. deserving. <laughs> All right, that is the end of Don Doom's turn. Next up, Hachi. Okay, this is super boring. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to go ahead and cast Phantom Prison, which is a third level Ooh, spell. Okay. It's also a new Secrets of Magic spell. Ooh. Um, and it is a will save, please. I, I'm, I'm, uh, well, you know what? I'll just roll it and you can explain to me what it does. Yeah. All right. Uh, we'll save. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, I'm not, I'm not great at these, but the last time I rolled something not great, I did roll a 20. So let's see what I get. A yeah, 16. I'm going to wager is a fail. It is a fail. It's against the 22. So mm. I can, with this spell, I can completely surround a larger, smaller creature in immobile, illusory walls, trapping it inside a false prison it cannot escape. No other oh. creatures see or feel these walls, and the target can't see anything outside of the illusory walls. The target can't attempt a will save um, when this spell is cast, and each time it att- attempts to escape. Um, and each time something from outside the walls affects the target, it can try again to try to get out. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And that's what Camel it does. Prison. It lasts for a minute. All right. You are surrounding this uh, camel statue with an illusory prison. You do still have one action left. I 
You don't. That's a big one. So that takes all three oh, actions that's a to three. cast. All right. Secrets of magic. All right. <laughs> I have to ask, that is though, the end of your turn. Yeah. What is the illusion that the camel sees that's keeping it in place? Is it like an oasis that? <laughs> no. <laughs> it sees, um, it sees like foxfire all around it in this like big cylindrical kind of cone thing that goes up and comes to a point at the top that looks almost like a tail. Like one of my oh. cool tails. Yeah, it's really cool. Nice. And the cool. spell sort of, when I, when I cast it, I sort of pet bug and flick like it's scale up to activate it. Nice. So you cast this spell and you're like, yes, I've got it. And now it is unfortunately the statue's turn to go. Okay. You quickly come to realize that animated statues do not have any mind and are immune to illusion spells such as phantom prison and it is going to move up ignoring the prison because (laughs) it is not affected by mental and it is going to move up to there and it is going to attempt to attack first the chelish nobleman who is kind of just like "Ah," as he's dragging this this stool along um he but, does get uh, a plus he doesn't one. give us his room after this. I mean, come on. He is also uh, desperately trying to get a rapier out of his uh, <laughs> belt. He's got a rapier uh, in his sheath that has died, but he hasn't drawn it yet. But uh, regardless, the uh, the statue is going to attack him. Here we go. Armor class of 23. Uh, that is not going to hit him. Yes. Uh, he is going to dance aside from that, and it is going to attack him a second time because he's the closest person, and it's going to miss again. All right, that was <laughs> one of the statues. The other statue is up fighting with Fang and Pharrell. It is going to attempt three attacks because it really doesn't have anything else to do. It's just a statue, and what? all of them are aimed at Fang. So here we no. go. Attack one. Armor class 22. His armor class is 22. Tied to the attacker. Take yeah. seven points of damage. Ow! I'm just going to be screaming. A little minimal. help over here, please! Uh oh. <laughs> Second attack is only an eight and comes up well short. And the third is a seven. Those are some pretty terrible rolls. The statue manages to hit once with one of its stone hooves, but the other two do not manage to land, and Fang is unscathed from those attacks. So that is it for the statues. My turn goes real quick now that I don't have uh, anything left but two statues. Uh, Pharrell, we are back up to the top of the order. You still have this statue in front of you. The attack from Fang did very little damage. It you know, turn sideways to dodge the lightning bolt last round. <laughs> what do you have for me this round? I am, I am, I am, this is bad. Uh, <laughs> first of all, I am hurting uh, right. when it comes to hit points. <laughs> I'm going to have to heal myself at this rate. Um, I am going to be using Act Together in case uh, okay. you needed anything. Uh, I might need... Because all of my allies are on the other side of the tavern, just dilly dallying over there and not helping me, I might need to call behind in. Behind tables, <laughs> we're busy. Hiding under tables while I'm just trying to heal someone, I might have to call in <laughs> some reinforcements and use animal ally, animal allies, and go Ta-ta! Ta-ta! and have like some kind of animals come and attack this camel so I can oh. do something. All right, so uh, you animal, want to cast allies. animal allies. Animal ally. It summons animals to briefly attack foes. I don't know what animal, if there's any animals around that can help. Uh, Probably s- not. We're in the middle of a tavern. Rats. What so. level? What level spell are you uh, are you casting? Uh, I'd say level two. Right. Uh, I would look. assume so. I think level two. Yeah. Yeah, because you only get uh, <laughs> you only get. Uh, Oh, it's a first level. It's a first level spell. It's a first level. Is it called Animal Ally? 
Animal Allies. It's in the new uh, page 87. <laughs> oh, it's a <laughs> new spell. Magic. Oh, okay. 90. Secret. Not like it. Ah, <laughs> see, there we go. New primal spell. Secret. Oh, it's okay. So I, oh, it's very small. I summon tiny, ordinary animals from the environment, such as insects, birds, or fish, to quickly Ooh, rash out yeah. the nearby fish. Foes. The this <laughs> animals swarm around the creature in the area, dealing them, dealing each of them three uh, d4 piercing damage. That's pretty with good. With a sure. basic reflex yeah. save, I feel like I feel like we're in a tavern. I feel like a bunch of rats could come if they were. Yeah. Could. So I think they'd be so in the same category here's, as birds. Here's, here's what the spell does, right? So it it this okay. summons a tiny ordinary animals from the environment such as insects birds or fish to quickly lash out at nearby foes the animals swarm around the creatures in the area dealing them damage uh uh with a basic reflex save so you mm -hmm. have to cast this as a second level spell because as a summoner you only get third and second level spells um you've already burned a lightning bolt and i think one That's other it. no you might still have a third but this one mm -hmm. uh, you're casting as a second it's going to do 6d4 because it's wow. heightened to second level. Um, wow, so wow. it does 3d4 plus an additional 3d4 at second level. It is a five foot emanation. Um, uh oh. Uh, but uh, that shouldn't be a problem. Um, you will need to move first, but that's that's not a big deal. Yeah, because the, the animals swarm around you and attack everyone nearby <laughs> yeah. you. Um, I see. So you'll need to like move first. Bugs. Yeah, you're, you're basically you're basically calling up rats and bugs and stuff from the environment uh, uh, to oh, attack. My so it's very okay. like uh, Radagast, like yeah, or, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's so, very uh, Ella enchanted when she's cleaning with roaches yeah. and and rats. That's exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you uh, if you move uh, back to over here. Uh, you can cast okay. it and only hit the camel. So you said you wanted to do, do act together. So both you, uh, what you could do is you could have uh, you move and your uh, your animal uh, fang could attack. Um, yep. Or you could just move and then use act together to cast the spell and then let fang attack, right? Mm. Uh, so that, I will that do that. Works. I will move. Yeah. And then use act together. I'm going to cast animal allies, and then Fang is going to attack while the camel is distracted by all the rats. All right, Ruby. And okay. Roach. So uh, you cast it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a reflex save. I am terrible at these. I rolled a nat one. Yeah. That Finally. Is a Finally. Fail. Jason was too powerful. So, so you you unleash a swarm these rats yeah. and bugs and and tiny little Ooh. scorpions and flies and 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 the fish from the plate on the table <laughs> jumps up that's to what attack i was thinking statue. it's like half of There's these like a meals of fish. <laughs> oh so god go it's and... like a horror movie <laughs> <laughs> so I go ahead this. and roll 6d4 Wow. One. Woohoo! You can Three. just. Oh my type... gosh! <laughs> I know, well, but uh, I rolled four fours and two threes. That's a lot. That is a. a uh, that, well, that's a, that's a pretty solid roll. <laughs> yeah. 16, 22. Eight. You do 44 points of damage. <laughs> wow. Can I survive that? I don't. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I can't. I, I All I right. Kill him with so. <laughs> yeah. You summoners gonna throw, summon. You throw a massive swarm of bugs and fish, uh. and you know, just everything just comes swarming out of you. It comes <gasps> swarming out of your hair and out of out of Fang's fur, and just devours this thing. And like as you're standing there, these things are just taking bites, and 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 the statue slowly just disappears. And by the time Erosion. the spell effect is done, all that's left are a few pebbles that fall to the floor. The statue is gone. So well done. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, what would you like Fang to do now? <laughs> since you 
since you have one action, you could have Fang move to the other one if you want, or you could just Does have, it have Fang. Does it have to be Fang? Does it have to be Fang's action, uh, or can it, can I see yeah, the because, action? Yeah, because no, because you cast the spell, so it has to come understood, out of you. Understood. Understood. Let's um, come out of Fang. Uh, I'll have Fang move to. Uh, I'll start. I'll have him move to the other camel that's in the okay illusion. All right. Uh, I can't believe I just killed good. a camel with bugs. <laughs> you wanna, if you if you move it up, it'll be within uh, Xander's uh, ingot's range of protection. Mm -hmm. Good idea. There you go. And you also now are in a spot where if Don Doom steps up, he'll be flanking. Flanking. All right. That was the end of Feral's turn. Ingot, we mm. are back to you. Oh, at the bottom of the round, the uh, the the Chelish nobleman draws his sword, and he'll uh, he'll swing. We'll, we'll do that real quick. We'll, we'll let him take a swing at it. Uh, that is going to hit. I'll roll the second one real quick. The second one is going to hit as well. He's going to do a little damage to it. Let's see what he does. Bounce two d6s here. Uh, okay, yeah. He, he dealt a few points of damage to it. He uh, he swipes out at it, and uh, a few chips of stone come flying off of it. And he's like, Die! Die! You wretched <laughs> camel statue! Kind of panicking. Um, but that is the end of his turn. Ingot. Yes. What do you got for me? Uh, for the first action, Ingot is going to continue concentrating on Protective Ward, increasing it five feet and uh, keeping it active. For the okay. second action, Ingot is going to draw a short sword as well. And if you were to look closely at this magical short sword, you could see that it was engraved T-H-E-E. -E. You just see the on it. Uh, and Ingot, for the final Aww. action, diagonally from under the table, is going to lash out to try to uh, attack this camel as well. Uh, wizards creature. making attack rolls. It's always <laughs> yeah. it's always fun. You gotta love it when you see it. All right. That ooh 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 a twenty nine. Twenty nine is a critical hit yes! from the wizard. Yes! <laughs> from the wizard. I, I swear it is it is entirely feast or famine with this group. It's either yeah, crit yeah, yeah. Or crit successes. There's no in between. <laughs> we live in a pendulum. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay, okay. Your your so, your blade goes slashing out underneath the table nice. and catches the camel statue right in one of its knee joints. So and that'll be doubled. So it was nine eighteen points of 18. slashing. Eighteen damage you put a gigantic crack in the side of this camel statue's leg uh 18 points of damage that is going to be reduced slightly but it's still going to have a pretty good effect um the statue kind of wobbles and tobbles a bit as uh as the crack kind of runs up and into the body but it is still up and fighting so you drew a weapon you made an attack and you concentrated your turn yes. is over. And then finally, uh, as this strike hits, Ingot will call out to Don. Get it! <laughs> <laughs> Don, oh, okay. boom. it is your turn. You cannot spell strike right now because you just did. What do you do? Got you. So I indeed am going to move up um, right in front of this, uh, this statue here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Uh, it says I can cast it from melee range. Um, the Produce Flame. Um, okay. Right next to this. So let's see if I sure. let's see if I hit. All right. So you okay. you summon up a ball of flame in your hand and reach out to touch this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I that's believe that's 21. two actions, right? Twenty-one. A ooh, twenty-one ooh. is going to hit. Um, it's not a crit or anything like that, but you do manage a solid hit with your hand of flame. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for that. Okay. Yeah. And that, uh, yeah, that's a cantrip. And the cantrip, that's, that's two actions still for the spell. Yep. Gotcha. So that is four. Uh, wait, no, wait. Is that damage? Wait. Two plus... Remember, you're casting it at third level, so it may be enhanced. Ah. Uh. Four. Okay. Uh, so... 
So okay. at third yeah. level, it's going to do 3d4. 3d4, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So that is, yeah. and I'll add that then. Seven. Seven. Nice. All right. You reach out with a with a palm of flame and strike this uh, uh, camel statue. Um, however, the flames wash over its stone and do very little damage. Oh. That looks like it had almost okay. no effect. Um, okay. Yeah. Looking at it, uh, oh, yeah. blades and, and other weapons are reduced just as much. So uh, it doesn't look like it's particularly vulnerable to fire. Um, so that is going to be the end of Don Doom's turn. Uh, next up, Hachi. Okay, I feel like no one else was able to finish this thing off, and I don't really feel very confident right now, but I'll give it my best. Um, <laughs> I kind of, um, I pet I pet Bug, and I sort of like, I flick its front claw, and like a magical little like little point comes out of its finger and I cast a uh, malicious shadow using one right. of my focus points for one of my hexes. All right. Malicious shadow. What's yes, that? And I do? Can... Okay. So I reshape the target's shadow into a deadly form. Um, going to use uh, like camel hooves. It just looks like it, but it's like more scary. Uh, sure. <laughs> and it command us to attack the target. Um, so when I cast it, I can make a, sh uh, a melee spell strike, and I can pick the kind of damage. Since I know it cannot take higher damage, I will make this uh, bludgeoning damage. Sure. Um, so mm. I'm going to roll to do a spell casting melee strike. Whoop. There you go. Whoop. Yep. Whoop. So this works a lot like uh, a spiritual weapon, but it's for witches, and it creates a shadow weapon instead. Um, yeah. So, so that is a uh, that. Go ahead. That's a 19 total to hit. 19 will just barely manage to hit. Yeah, um, I did some. I did. Hey, everyone, I did one thing today. You did it. Did I know? So <laughs> on. that is going to do 1d10 points of damage plus your spell casting ability modifier. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Which I think so for you is good. int. It's your int. Uh, it is. Sorry, let's go back up real quick. Yeah. It is intelligence. You're right. Yes. Yep. Uh, so that is a nine plus four. Thirteen. Damage. Thirteen. Uh, the 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 shadow hoof strikes out at this camel, cracking into it. Uh, the the <laughs> statue cracks, uh, taking thirteen points of damage. That did a decent amount of damage to it, but still. Wow! It looks like it is resisting these attacks. It, it's just made of stone. However, um, it is at the point now where it's um, kind of like it's it's a it's a stone statue, right? And a lot of it has now kind of broken away. Um, and uh, ah, yes. In sculpture, oh. sometimes oh, the actually... piece lives within the stone and must be freed. That's that's no, right. That's, so that's bullshit. Yeah, I just realized <laughs> it actually took it actually took more damage on the past two attacks because it was reduced to half. I forgot about that. Um, animated objects when they when they are reduced to half their hit points, their armor kind of breaks, like their outer oh, shell breaks, oh. and they're far more vulnerable to hits. So the two attacks combined are going to do an additional bit of damage, and that hoof shadow is enough to destroy it. It oof, oof. is gone. And, and you hear like suddenly, if there if I had a coconut right now, I would be so happy for myself to be do the coconut horse the <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of magic leaving the camel stone body. <laughs> so you can say so, that's the shadow that broke the camel's back. No, oh, we're not saying that. No. Put another pun point. I <laughs> One point. Are we doing this? <laughs> this this is this is why I put dragons in my games. Okay, <laughs> so you all you all drive me to put dragons. In. All right. Um, this is how you get dragons. <laughs> this this is how you end up with multiple dragons in the game. Okay, so uh, quite suddenly the tavern grows silent. Um, the nobleman. Uh, stabs down at the statue that has fallen 
uh, at his feet, and he's like, ha ha, we have managed to best it. <laughs> Good job. Well, we? I, he looks he looks to all of you, and he's like, well, I'm certainly glad that I had all of your assistance. I mean, I didn't do that much, but I feel like you did less than me, which is saying a lot. And, and as he's saying that, he's still dragging the stool yeah, behind him because you have a stool on your cape. <laughs> and, he, and he kind of looks back <laughs> and he puts <laughs> little of those off. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is quite the mess, and I'm going to have nothing to do with cleaning it up. I'm going to bed. And uh, <laughs> he he is making his way upstairs. He like goes <laughs> and steps <laughs> right <laughs> over Nerissa's <laughs> unconscious body and just oh goes. Oh my out. god! <laughs> How rude! So uh, I I feel like now would be a good time to heal Narissa. <laughs> <laughs> now that I have a moment without a camel on my butt, <laughs> a camel butt, like a cigarette butt. Anyway, because a camel. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Oh, on that on that <laughs> note, uh, let's do some healing plaster. <laughs> let's see. Um... I want to make sure I have the right one. So healing plaster, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go up to Narissa and I'm yep. going to, um, again, just take some dirt off the ground because obviously this area didn't get sweeped yet and the brooms are non-existent at the moment. I'm going to spit oh, in it, add a little water. Huh? There's a whole bunch of powder from the, the camel statue that kind of got <laughs> disintegrated <laughs> by it. bugs. Yeah. I heal her with the camels that knocked her out, uh, and I'm going to make healing plaster with the with the dust of the camel. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, so you you conjure up some some healing plaster and uh, you go to work. You can use battle medicine on her and just uh, yes. you know give her a bunch of hit points back really quickly. Um, you can yes. either kind of just do it automatically and give her back two d what is it two d six. Uh huh. Two D eight. I always forget. Uh, always it forget? is. I'm looking at it now on, under battle medicine. But it's the medicine skill. Battle medicine just lets you do it quickly. So um, oh, it is two D eight. Uh, is DC okay. fifteen? But you can attempt the DC twenty to give back two D eight plus ten. Your choice. I might have to do that. Can I do this twice? One to her, and one to myself, because I also need to Absolutely. heal. <laughs> Yeah. Terribly. So um, the the way medicine works, right, is that mm -hmm. um, you're able to use it on kind of everyone. It just takes 10 minutes most of the time to use it on people. Battle medicine lets you do it on someone once per day in one round, right? You can, you can do it as just like one action. You can like patch them up, uh, but you can only do that once a day because their body can't take that kind of medicine uh, more than once per day. So um, with the innkeep, if you want to get her up on her feet right away, you could just do battle medicine. For everybody else, you can spend the 10 minutes and, and heal them up normally. I'm going to do battle medicine, which I'm going to give her the 2d8, which is... I gave her 10 hit points back. Hopefully that's enough to wake her up from her concussion. Yeah, uh, it, actually it is. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, everyone who is unconscious, and in this case it was more like she was just knocked out by the by the stone hoof hitting her in the head. And she she wasn't really like you know, dying or anything like that. She was just Good. dazed and kind of out of it and on the ground. So you you heal her up, and she kind of comes to, and she's like, oh, oh, and she's kind of just holding her head where she's she's obviously going to have quite the welt, um, I, the vaguely hoof print shaped welt. welt. <laughs> I take and, a leaf uh, out. I take a leaf out of my hair, chew it, and you hand it to her, like this will help with the migraine. And you don't have to, to eat the garbage. She's like, thank you. And she just kind of puts it in a pocket. <laughs> and I, I, I like look over to uh, Ingot and I just like open up like a coat pocket and it's just full of like full. good leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Useful for later. Yeah. yeah. Uh, she's like, oh, thank you. Oh, what, what happened? And she looks around and it's just... I mean, it's a catastrophe in here. There's there's tables and chairs tossed about. Um, there, her her statues have been destroyed. Her brooms have been bitten in half. Her silverware is scattered across the ground. <laughs> so, need, like, what what happened? You're going to need a bigger broom. Well, okay, I, I, 
Your your animated objects, uh, when you passed out, became quite violent and um, made all of this mess, and we helped defeat them so they didn't murder us. Oh, you're you're too kind. I I'm I'm so terribly sorry. I I, I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I, I, I thought I had them under control. It, it 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 seemed so simple to get them to do my bidding. I I I guess I didn't know what would happen if I stopped directing them. I, I she you know, just that is kind actually, of around. That is actually quite odd because when I stop concentrating on a spell, it just stops working. And when you became unconscious, your spell became more violent. So there's something odd there for certain. Um, can I do an archive? The magic just, the, 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 making these things come to life just comes naturally to me i can just do it and she like there's like a a fork on the floor from the oh, silverware oh, oh. that went flying across the room and she just like wiggles her finger around it and the fork just kind of gets up and starts dancing across the floor and she's just like i don't even know how i just know that i can and uh they they just kind of dance about and she's she's Perplexed. We all we all get in battle poses. <laughs> yeah, for the fork. <laughs> ready to ready to fight the fork. <laughs> um magic is a mysterious and incredibly powerful force and takes years of study and perfection and practice. What you are doing is dangerous not only for yourself but to everyone in this town. She looks at you and she says, "Well, I'm 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 terribly sorry that it, it took you years to do what I learned how to do in only a week, but, but you I'm get sure you'll get that <laughs> <laughs> um, That just is like, not what Ingen is saying. <laughs> she's just Burn like, the tavern I, down. <laughs> she's like, we are all blessed, and and this is just one of the many blessings. And and she she's looking, but but you are right. It is it is too dangerous. I should I should not create such things, especially if I cannot control them, and she just kind of holds her head. I will be much more careful in the future. I I, I just, all power. just wanted everyone to be happy. All power she, has some price, whether it's years of study and hard work, or a consequence that we cannot see. She nods. Perhaps, perhaps you're right. Well, I'm I'm terribly sorry that you had to risk life and limb to protect my my humble establishment. Uh, I, the room is on me. You can stay as long as you like. I I'm I'm terribly sorry about about all this. Um, and I, I I should probably get to cleaning up. She looks around at the kind of catastrophe that is her common room. She like picks up half of a broom that got bitten half by Fang. So she's basically now just got a a, a small dust room. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she she goes over and starts uh uh sweeping up all the forks and spoons and knives. Uh and it's just like, well, I I I must I must gather these up. You you're probably exhausted and your room is waiting and she she kind of drops the key off. Uh if you recall, the the four of you rented the kind of merchant suite. Um, which sounds fancy, but in reality isn't. It's just four bunk beds uh, in a room with 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 you know a chest and a table, uh, and it's up upstairs. So if you look inside the the tavern here, uh, there's these stairs going up. They actually go up to a space that is up above um, that uh, has a single hallway. It looks like there's a nice fancy room on the west end. There's the larger room on the east end, and there's like two tiny little rooms for like lone travelers in the middle. Um, so it's a very none of these are particularly spacious, um, but um, it's it's up at the top of the stairs. So uh, you can make your way up there, or talk, or investigate, or do whatever you want. So as soon as we get in the me. door, Ingot calls top bunk, and Ingot scurries up. <laughs> Ing Ingot likes to feel tall. <laughs> um, as Farrell uh, passes Nerissa and starts walking towards um, 
the stair or wherever to the room, I guess. She looks back at Nerissa and goes, You might want to also invest in some pest control. <laughs> she she's like, What what do you mean? I mean, there's always a few bugs, the occasional scorpion. We are a desert town after all, but it's usually not too bad. Um you might have more of an infestation than you realize. <laughs> well, well, she does now, thanks to you. <laughs> hey, hey, summon. look, desperate times calls for de- desperate roaches. Okay, <laughs> to, to, to do something. <laughs> My that, lightning that, bolts obviously weren't working. <laughs> that if 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 this episode wasn't already titled, that would be the title: Desperate Times, <laughs> Desperate Roaches. All right. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, the, the, the four of you make your way up to the room. Uh, she drops off a, uh, uh, she, Nerissa comes up shortly after you all retire and drops off a plate of, uh, uh, salted fish, uh, some, uh, small, uh, local, uh, sweet crackers and a carafe of the palm wine, uh, that she's been serving. And I want to be clear, palm wine is isn't wine it's a super sweet liquor um that um you basically don't even have to ferment you just tap it out of the tree and it ferments within like an hour on its own and is really sweet and alcoholic so she drops off a picture of that for all of you um, adult to, capri she son says, <laughs> yeah she says it doesn't it doesn't really keep till the next day anyway and uh and frankly you've all earned it so uh to soothe your 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 battered your battered heads um as you no, uh, have a, well yeah i have an should. idea oh. well go ahead oh go please oh this is Bob, very quick a... i'm sorry i'm sorry haji um do we get refills on this he's <laughs> <laughs> like i, uh, you time I have another i'll leave another carafe down on the bar uh, if you if you if you want another, but if you can drink all of that, you have a far heartier stomach than I. Um, you know, if you're trying to move this this uh, merchandise off the shelves a little quicker, you should do a little bit of marketing. Since you do own the uh, camel themed tavern, maybe you should name it the Camel Claw. Come on, everyone at the same time. Ah, <laughs> camel claw. Camel claw. Yes. I think that really well, I, I had. That. I, 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 there are the occasional traveler has asked me why I haven't renamed it the Drowsy Dromedary, but I, 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 the Drowsy Camel is just what it's always been called when I inherited the place from my, from my mother. So, uh, you know, the tradition sticks. So she, she says, Thank you, thank you. I've, I've nearly cleaned up downstairs and will be turning in myself here shortly. I, I hope you all, uh, have a good evening. And she, she makes her way back downstairs. All right. I, unless, I cast prestidigitation and I, I yeah. clean the room because it's dirty yeah, for me. Sure. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you can you can go ahead and clean up the room. That's not a problem. Uh, is, does anyone else have anything they want to uh, do before you turn in for the night? You can uh, make more heal checks. By the way, you can yep. make more medicine checks or spend <laughs> spells some, or do whatever. I need some hit points. Ingot could use some as well. Oh, me first. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Put your own mask on before helping others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I pull out my. Uh, I have healer's gloves that I've just been like not Ooh. using this whole time, by the way, because <laughs> you can't use it once a day. So I wait till the end of the day to use them, um, and I sort of throw them at you and get. Ooh. Two d two d six plus seven hit points once a day. Don't waste it. I, I will put them on. <laughs> Can they be like half gloves? And so they're just over sure. his fingies. Of course, yes, of course they're fancy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he sort of slaps himself. So uh, that was six plus seven. Uh, <laughs> yeah, two, two, six <laughs> plus seven. Thirteen. Thirteen. Right. All right. Yeah. So um, we we won't we won't belabor the point. You can you you because you have the whole night. You can do some medicine checks. That's going to heal everyone for two d eight. You can do more of them in the morning. Right. I, I, I'm just gonna let everybody go back to full. We won't we won't waste time rolling oh, dice just you. to just to heal Lovely. when you could just spend more time. Um, there's no time pressure. So mm. um, you all uh, uh, spend uh, a night in this inn. the The beds are all uh, simple wood frame. They have kind of uh, uh, reed mats on them that are scratchy but but comfortable. 
Um, and uh, the uh, roof of the uh, room that you are in is open. Uh, there is an opening in it because, frankly, it rains here maybe once a year. Um, so the roof uh, up above is, is, is open. It has a skylight that looks up at the starry night sky. And oh. the, the stars wheel overhead as you all pass your first night in the tiny desert town of Zal Tyr. Uh, Feral sleeps and... on the floor using <laughs> Fang as a pillow. <laughs> oh, nice. And this honestly seems like as good a time of any for us to take a short little break. Um, we are going to give the cast here 10 minutes to uh, uh, go get some water and get themselves ready for the second half of this exciting episode. Stay tuned, everybody. We will be right back. Your summer of gaming continues with Paizo's latest releases, available at paizo.com and your favorite local game store. The Pathfinder Lost Omens to Mwangi Expanse hardcover contains more than 300 beautifully illustrated pages detailing the people and cultures of the Expanse. You'll find 19 cultures, like the fishing clans of the Bonduat people and the nomadic Taralu dwarves, and six new ancestries, including the spider shapeshifting Anadi, the amphibious Gripley, and the mountain dwelling Shisk. The Mwangi Expanse is more than just a jungle, broken into ten regions from the bleak stone ruins and gray clouds of the Bandu Hills to Lake Okoda, the largest body of fresh water in the Expanse. The area's many biomes are sure to provide backdrops for adventures of every kind. Nine major cities, memorable NPCs, monsters, and more await you in Pathfinder Lost Omens, the Mwangi Expanse. All three volumes of the Fist of the Ruby Phoenix Adventure Path are here. The adventure begins when the sorcerer, Hao Jin, invites your group of adventurers to an uninhabited island to compete in the preliminary qualifier of our global fighting tournament. 32 teams of warriors must complete challenges, withstand the elements, and face off against one another in deadly combat to win entry to the main tournament. Malevolence is a horror-themed adventure for third-level characters written by James Jacobs, featuring sinister new monsters, mysterious magical items, and spells to discover, and a fully detailed haunted house for players to explore, exercise, and endure. And don't forget to pick up Pathfinder Flipmat Malevolence along with the adventure. One side depicts the ground floor of a haunted mansion, and the other side shows the house's spooky upper floor. The Fly Free or Die adventure path concludes with The Gilded Cage. It's finally payback time for the crew of the Oliphant, but can their plans hold long enough to lure the enemy out into the open? Ready for space exploration? The horizons of the vast adventure path begins with Planetfall, the first volume of a six-part adventure path. With the discovery of a resource-rich planet within the vast, the race is on to settle the planet. But there are other elements in play that will take all the wits, cunning, and combat capabilities of true adventurers. It's Kingmaker in space. New adventurers await members of the Pathfinder Society as well, including In Pursuit of Water and Breaking the Storm, Excising Ruination. Learn more at pathfindersociety.club and join a gang with friends from around the world or across the table. Looking for a quick adventure to fill time between sessions? Pathfinder Bounty Forge Facade takes two hours and sends players to a decadent salon in Galt to learn the truth about a disgraced artist. Further your Starfinder Society agent story in two new adventures. Delve into the Year of the Data Scourge with settling accounts and battle for the beacon. Learn more by visiting starfindersociety.club. Dungeon denizens from the Abomination Vault Adventure Path are ready to rise from the depths and face your players on the tabletop. The Abomination Vault's pawn collection features more than 150 creature pawns and is the perfect companion at your table. Each pawn is printed in full color on hardy cardstock. Flip Mat Classics Museum brings a fully illustrated museum map to your tabletop. This 24 by 30 inch mat has a special coating that allows for easy removal of wet, dry, and permanent markers. 
Docking sequence activated. Starfinder Flip Tile Space Station Docking Bay Expansion provides 24 beautifully illustrated 6 inch by 6 inch map tiles that can be used to enhance your station with landing pads, catwalks, a refueling station, and an expansive open docking bay to explore. Find your path to friendship and adventure with these new releases and more at Paizo.com and your favorite local game store. Come on down to Starfinder, fly your ship and shoot some lasers. The games we play are the stories we create. The fortress doors swing open. Every story is unique. And the sound of war drums rises. Sometimes our stories come to us when we least expect them. We need to be ready no matter where inspiration strikes. And sometimes our stories are told over great distances. No matter where your journey leads you or how your story is told. The games we play are the stories we create. Sirenscape can help make yours epic. Sirenscape is searchable, fast, and customizable from any device with no need to pre-install any sound. Adding epic atmosphere to your game has never been easier. The Ruby Phoenix Tournament, the world's greatest martial arts contest, held in honor of the legendary sorcerer Hao Jin, the Ruby Phoenix. The final team standing in this once-per-decade contest wins a grand prize. Their choice of a single item from Hao Jin's magnificent vault of treasures. This year, Hao Jin herself will preside as the grand judge. But to receive the honor of just even meeting the Ruby Phoenix, the contestants must first prove their mettle and strength in the untamed jungles of Danger Island. Only the eight greatest teams will proceed to the metropolis of Goka to compete for the title of Ruby Phoenix Champions. During a year that promises to be unlike any other, countless untold mysteries await the challengers. Will it be mysterious scoundrels like the Light Keepers? Brave friends such as Tino's Toughest? Or will it be your team of adventuring heroes to claim the Sorcerer's Prize? Let the games begin with the Fists of the Ruby Phoenix Adventure Path.
up your game with a Pathfinder character folio from Ultra Pro. Each character folio features a full art cover, 12 single pocket pages for character sheets and maps with dry erase capability. Also, internal front and back pockets for excess notes. Find character folios at your local game store or shop.ultrapro.com. Welcome back. When we went on break, uh, our, our, our intrepid band of heroes had just managed to defeat a, a bunch of animated objects, camel statues, bunch of silverware, a pair of brooms that went down into a pile of matchsticks, and uh, had earned themselves a nice night's rest. Getting getting to sleep uh, in the, in the uh, rooftop uh, merchant's uh, uh, suite in the drowsy camel, uh, you are all refreshed. You wake up with all of your abilities back. You can spend some time regaining your spells. You're all back to full health. Is there anything in particular you would like to do in the morning before uh, you head downstairs, maybe to break your fast? <laughs> I'm already down that... there when everyone wakes up, and I've ordered another 20 plates of fish, um, <laughs> a jug of the palm wine, and uh, Bug is eating most of that and drinking most of that, and I'm just sort of like, you know, I, I do that thing where I hinge my jaw, and I eat like 10 <laughs> fish at a time, but it's fine. Totally disturbing. <laughs> That really messes with some of the locals. That uh, <laughs> you notice that uh, by the time you get down there, there's there's only a few folks down here. To be honest, uh, the the group of you actually stayed up pretty late, and after ministering to your wounds and having some of the palm wine that was sent up, um, you you probably went to sleep much later than almost everyone else. And as a result, by the time you wake up, it's you know probably closer to noon than normal for for most of you. It's like you know. 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning by the time you all get up and get yourselves kind of put together and ready to go um, is there anything else anyone else would like to do before they go downstairs anything we need to know about or are you just kind of getting up preparing yourself yeah Ingot is preparing his spells on the top bunk and how he does this is meditating in front of these crystals he's sort of infusing them with the energies and looking them over as his spell book uh, sort of choosing what he needs and attaching cool. them to various jewelry and things like that. Oh, it's hard sure. to prepare spells. I think how I prepare spells in my, my ritual is to just feed Bug, like just gorge him, you know? And then that kind of gives him energy, like physical energy. And then while he's busy eating, I can focus and uh, set spells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as, as, as Bug eats, Bug probably burps, and that's that's how you get most of your spells. There's a, <laughs> yeah, it's not fancy like I am, but it is my life. So, <laughs> uh, how Fang and I kind of regain our our focus and and point stuff is we uh, we we like to connect on a deeper level. So we we're on the ground doing yoga, <laughs> and, and he's matching me in every way. You know, like those viral dog oh, videos yeah. of like the master doing yoga and like the dogs copying that's kind of what fang and i are doing so i'm like you know going and lean back and fang's like going oh like we're you're doing like we're connecting on that level and, and having so that's, that's you're probably point. doing a lot of downward facing dog pose right <laughs> I, I wasn't gonna say it i was gonna save it but yes yeah and then oh, okay. downward facing dog i'm sorry downward facing <laughs> wolf <laughs> Warrior. <laughs> London, what do you do to prepare your spells in the morning? Yeah, so Don, he is a, he's a multitasker. So as he's playing his game of the, the Absalom equivalent of solitaire, <laughs> he's also just sh uh, shuffling uh, in his mind the catalog of spells and what he needs for the day. And when he finishes the game, the last spell is prepared and he's ready to go. Um, but he's a little slower today. Um, the, the palm wine from last night has him, <laughs> you know, squinting at every ounce of sunlight that makes its way into the room. Sugar. Yeah, and it, and in fact, there is a fair amount of that because that that pleasant moon roof in the in the room also oh. lets the sun in oh. in the morning. <laughs> oh, um, 
Oh. And uh, uh, that is like a, a shaft of pain that slowly <laughs> creeps its way along the floor. Uh, but you're all able to prepare yourself. So you go downstairs. Uh, uh, Narissa has left out a uh, basket of fruit um, as well as uh, uh, atop the bar there is um, some some juice uh, that's been uh, that's been fresh squeezed and uh, you're not sure what the the, 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 the uh, it looks like there's a lot of dates and uh, some uh, um, coconuts and things like that there's not it's not a lot of citrus um, but there, there are a few that they probably have brought in um, and uh, uh, there's also a few uh, kind of breads like morning rolls kind of thing um so it's kind of a it's kind of a, a continental breakfast as a continental you were. Uh, breakfast. But, uh, that's right yeah no they're, they're not cooking anything fresh for you it's all just kind of take what you want um, don't mind if i do as you're as you're as you as you sit down and and finish up the meal hachi you were able to order from next door uh, the the dwarf that operates the the restaurant next door was happy to cook up some fish for you real quick um but they're the morning catch, so they're like tiny, like they're like you know this long. They're, they're tiny little, tiny little fish. So are you um, fish? Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> baby trout. Uh, so uh, you're all uh, finishing up your your breakfast, you know, uh, when you hear a bit of a commotion outside. Just something going on. You're not sure what. Uh oh. Where's Narissa? Uh -oh. <laughs> uh so yeah um you know if uh, not narissa is back behind the bar here down uh but you know there's the, the commotion outside clearly has nothing to do with the, the the tavern here it's just uh there's something going on you're not sure what though well we better check it out i say uh, right. i was muted <laughs> i say we oh. go and check it out is what i was going to say okay <laughs> All right, so you make your way uh, out the front door of the drowsy camel, and you're in kind of the larger... Um, I'm going I'm to swap back to the main map of the city here, just to kind of show you the, the lay of things. We'll go back to the Zaltir town map. And uh, you're here at... Uh, let me actually move Narissa to the token layer. Um, and we'll go ahead and, and make... Rastavan disappeared because that's just where you ran into him. So uh, I leave the tokens at the places where you know that are like businesses for folks. Um, but let me move back to the town map. There we go. Um, so uh, you're uh, leaving uh, kind of Narissa's place here, um, which is the drowsy camel right there in the center of town. Um, you can see that... Um, in the kind of dead center of town, there is a well. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, it's not a well. It's more like a, a fountain. Fountain. Uh, fountain and well. Um, and it is surrounded by kind of a mosaic pattern on the the floor um, <clears throat> uh, that looks kind of like the town arrayed around the well. And opposite mm -hmm. Narissa's, kind of across the way, is this shop. And the commotion is coming from the shop because there is a gigantic line of people lined up outside of this shop and uh above the door you can see uh painted uh on a sign it said the road to oh, fell songs oh it looks and, like our, uh, our ah. friend fell song is up to something over there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. after Indeed, closing up so early i would i would imagine he'd be busy So uh, yeah, there's there's like about a dozen people out in line in front of the place, and as you're standing there, a group of like four more come up and get in line. Look like well, town stories and locals. I couldn't pass out a bargain if my life depended on it. Um, <laughs> I am a merchant, after all. Wink backstory. Uh, so <laughs> I uh, former merchant. Now I'm an enigma. It's a whole thing. Um, mm -hmm. So I would definitely go over. Is anyone gonna come with me? Yes, I would like to. But are we gonna are we gonna wait in this line? Oh no, God, no! Why don't we don't wait in lines? 
We're enigmas, oh, exactly. darling. We don't do that kind of thing. <laughs> we go straight to the front, and if someone sees us, we just cast invisibility. That's all I do. That she is so it. wise. <laughs> oh, so I would like to go to the front. Yeah. You uh, you make your way uh over to Fel Sans, and I'm gonna go ahead and shift the map over. Oh, so uh, here we are. This is the this is the well slash fountain here in the middle. Uh, we'll use this well token because I don't think I've got <laughs> a good fountain made a line token. Of people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, there are a, a whole bunch of folks, uh, a, a group just got let inside, um, and uh, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of folks here kind of standing out in line waiting to get inside. Now at the same time, uh, uh, Rastavan, the bard, is uh, sitting next to the fountains uh, playing his double pipe um, and uh, entertaining folks, and there's just a line of people. Um, you also see the uh, the uh, Chelish noble is in line already. Uh, he's wow. a couple spots away from the end. Um, and the rest of the folks just look like uh, a town folk for the most part. Hmm. Some familiar faces here. Hmm. Um, I, I kind of, as, as I'm walking over, uh, I just kind of go over to, to Rastavan and I just give him a, just a subtle, you know, like a like a what's up? <laughs> as as he's no, playing, he kind of nods at you. Um, he has his uh, his hat is out in front of him, and it's got a few coins in it. And he is uh, playing away, and uh, he kind of nods at you uh, politely as he uh, continues to play a kind of a a jaunty tune. It's not super repetitive or grating or anything. It's it's just kind of light and carries on the the warm morning uh, air. Uh, and the folks, you can notice a few of the folks in line are kind of tapping their foot to it. Um, and, you know, he just seems happy to be entertaining folks. Mm, perfect. Fang, uh, then I go Fang over to... A... Uh, all right. <gasps> puppy dance. Yeah, he, Fang is doing his little puppy dance. His little, he's moving his paws <laughs> to the beat of the music. Uh, at that, Rostovan uh, kind of notices that Fang is dancing to the music, and he will kind of nod back and forth <laughs> and play with the wolf um and uh the the two of them put on a bit of a, a bit of a dance performance um that uh, uh a few folks in the crowd uh find entertaining this isn't quite everyone that's here there are a few other you know there's a couple kids running around and all that kind of stuff i'm not going to move tokens around constantly to represent it but there's, <laughs> there's a few more folk here and they're the the inside of the 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 shop looks quite busy as well um so uh, what are, uh, what's Hachi doing? Um, I would like to go straight to the front of the line and, um, just so I don't waste spell points, I'd like to stealth past the person in front to sneak inside. Wow. <laughs> so, you go walking straight up to the front. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and I move you up to I the turn into here. a human. Uh, uh, <laughs> Look, uh, okay. I'm a human now. <laughs> um, you, you shift, uh, back into a human and as you're making your way up to the front door i mean there's no stealthing in front of the people who are standing in line right there Wait, what if can i assist I right from the side? can i assist though because if i if i know what hachi is up to if i you know and i see her kind of making her way to the front i can just be like come on thing and like you know get everyone's attention like look at my wolf <laughs> and get everyone to turn their and, and now we're and talking about the distraction in. Dance uh, as Hachi can sneak through. Can I get a deception or a perform check of some sort? Ooh. From me? Yes. yes. You may. That was me doing my library bar teams. Yeah. <gasps> I just rolled a nat 20. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That is most, uh, very good. So. I'm the most entertaining no one you've ever seen <laughs> were you attempting a deception check or a performance check performance okay what's that come out to for you 24 so uh 24 so i mean it would be the same deception or performance would be the same it's the same uh, modifier but uh so i could just be like fang and i could be doing a synchronized jazz square <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
can flute so music? You, you, you and the We're doing our yoga to, get to the beat of the music. <laughs> you, you, and, you and Fang are getting a lot of folks' attention. And uh, Hachi, can you give me a stealth check, please? Oh, I certainly can. That is a dirty 20. Nice, nice, nice. Dirty 20. Okay. Um, I am going to go ahead and... Where is it? Uh, there it is. Okay. So... I'm talking or not. <laughs> Settle down. <laughs> uh, no, you don't know their names yet. Quiet. Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Oh. I'm looking at um, the thing. <laughs> no, no spoilers. Uh, all right. Sorry, uh, sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. All right. So, but you're about to meet one of them anyway. Uh, so you go <laughs> sneaking up to the door and, well, you make your way up to the door, but on the other side of the door, there's a very large, broad chested man with a very deadly looking scimitar at his side who Whoa. is staring at you. And uh, as you go to open up the door, he just nods and points to the end of the line. Oh, no, you don't understand, friend. I um, and friend, I, I am a fellow merchant. and I am just here to, you know, swap notes with a fellow merchant. The, the, what's his name? Fell for all I his name is. It's Kat Kat. Fell son. <laughs> With Felson, I'm like whispering next. To, I'm just whispering to somebody. Uh, it's Felson. <laughs> and uh, you know, I I mean no harm. I'm simply here to uh, you know trade notes. And uh, the guard looks at you and says, "Then you can wait your turn, like everyone else." Felson is okay. very busy right now. Okay, all right. You're very large and you're very scary. I get it. I get it. It's your whole thing. Um, at this point, <laughs> I would. He's I'm like, gonna, it is. <laughs> I'm gonna be not suspicious. I'm not suspicious. I'm gonna like just chill over here for a second, <laughs> and I'm gonna kind of motion over to the rest of the party. Like, it did not work out for me. Yeah. I re I was overconfident, and I thought I could go in, but I didn't. So if you want to do this, let's do it. And I wait for you to do something. <laughs> um, as as Hachi does that, I like look over at Fang like. Quick, Fang, let's do secret back door. And I like move my body <laughs> in like a weird position. <laughs> Fang mimics me. <laughs> I say that out loud to Hachi. <sighs> I don't know. So, you try, um, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. I was just, I was just basically hinting to Hachi, like maybe there's another door. I didn't know. Mm. Should I roll for that so, to see if I knew what you meant? <laughs> uh. Yeah, I mean, you could you could uh, give me a perception check while you're there. Let's let's start with a perception check. <laughs> I kind of thought having rolled dice would be better, but I don't know. Um, this is uh, this is a sixteen. It's not terrible. I mean, if she really wanted um, to get in without waiting in line, <laughs> just trying to give her some. Help. You're not sure what she means because you're kind of distracted because you're you're standing right next to a window mm. that lets you look into the shop. Right. Oh well. <laughs> uh, and inside, you can see a whole bunch of people um, picking up various fine goods. So you know, there's like water pictures and dishes and pillows. But these aren't just like, oh, it's a a water carafe made of clay. Oh no, no, this this looks coated in silver and encrusted with emeralds. This this dish looks like it's painted with gold and silver filigree and this these pillows look like they're made of silk and they have gold tassels all around them everything in here looks marvelous and incredibly valuable um and people are picking it up and they, and you see someone go up to the counter and they're they're holding um this silver uh water carafe um that is shaped to kind of look like um a, uh, the handle is shaped to look like a, a palm that is opened up. And uh, they take it up to the front and they, they speak some words, but you can't hear it because the window is closed. And and then they literally drop a few silver pieces onto the counter and come outside with their luxurious water uh, carafe and go head home with it. I would like to activate my very dumb merchant skill, please. <laughs> <gasps> uh, like an appraisal? It's not, no, it's not good. I mean, I, I just have merchant mercantile lore as one of my ah, background sure. things. I thought I would sure. never roll it. You, 
Um, I also have a bargain hunter you, you, you skill You thought key. wrong. <laughs> Go ahead <laughs> and give me. This is all merchant shit. Give okay, me a merchant real. lore check. Ooh. Oh, baby, that's going to be good. That's a 17 plus 12, which is 29. Mm-hmm. Merchant the lore. If you're you're not sure what it is that you're seeing exactly, but if that person literally only paid three silver pieces for a giant sculpted ornate gem encrusted water carafe, the owner of this shop just got fleeced. <laughs> <laughs> that is that thing is probably worth several gold pieces at a minimum. Um, and depending on the craftsmanship, maybe even more. Th- there's a decent chance that was just sold for like a tenth of its value. <laughs> okay, I report back to the group. All right, I know a thing or two about the buying and selling of valuable items, and there is something weird going on. Either this uh, this fellow inside, this merchant, is an idiot, which, you know... Who knows? Uh, or there's something weird and magical going on, and we've got to get in and investigate, but I'm not waiting in that line. Any ideas, team? Perhaps this is the magical gift that was bestowed upon this merchant. To make things look fancy I... and charge underneath their worth? Mm, it is a strategy. Mm. Yoga pose, scandal in the shop. And I do my little mm. scandal in the shop pose. <laughs> uh, I'm still yeah. dancing. Yeah, as the audience is sort of paying attention to uh, Feral and Fang, uh, Ingot sort of moves over to the front uh, with uh, Don as well, bringing him over, uh, and addresses the crowd that is waiting in line. Uh, greetings, fair people. Ingot is Ingot. This is Don Doom. We are Enigmas from the Absalom College of Mysteries. The great city of Absalom, that is. Great, great city. Uh, We have heard tales of magical abilities being bestowed upon the fair residents, and we are conducting a survey. Since you are waiting in line and have nothing else to do, please tell us of these magical abilities that may or may not have gifted you while you have lived here. I do. You can tell a bunch of them are looking for the opt out button. They're like, "Where's the X? I don't want to do this." No, uh, you could always um, get out of line. (laughs) (laughs) Um, the 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 folk uh, are are kind of looking at you, and and they're like, "Well, yeah, I mean, we've all, you know, they they mention, you know, you hear somebody say, "Oh, I can, I can, I can, you know." clean up my house with the snap of my fingers and one's like oh. my, my vegetable garden has grown to ten times its normal bounty you know congratulations things of that things of kind of that nature is kind of what you hear from the folks in this line uh the woman at the so there's a few people of interest mm-hmm. um first off um uh you notice your your friendly neighborhood chelish nobleman who's standing ah. in line right um, and while stool. he's standing there, you notice he is he's drinking uh, from a, uh, a flask or a flagon that is definitely from the drowsy camel. And mm-hmm. as he's standing there, he's also got a, a parasol, by the way, that he's he's using to shield himself from the sun. And, what a fancy uh, lad! <laughs> uh, what, he, Did he, uh, he drains, he's fancy. <laughs> he drains the, the the mug. And uh, snaps his fingers at a young boy who he tosses a copper to. And the boy takes the mug and then runs across the way back to the drowsy camel to <laughs> refill it. Um, uh, and he, he's he, just, did he bring his own did he bring his own stool to sit down in this line? No, <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, but yeah, if, if he if he could, he, he would have. Uh, he didn't think that far ahead. So next time. Uh so that that he's of interest, but he doesn't really pay any attention to your spiel, nor does he answer you because he's not from around here. Um, there are folks in line that just look like common folk. You know, some of them are like, "Oh, my house is cleaned up easily every day. My laundry never. I never need to take it down to the river to get it clean." Uh, you know, and and you know, people are talking about how their vegetable gardens are growing at fantastic rates. And you did notice on the way in that some of the some of the like gardens in the back of people's. Uh, you know, because most of these houses have these little walled-in gardens, but 
but a lot of them seemed to be really overflowing with bounty. There was lots of greenery. Um, and, uh, there's also, uh, at the very end, there's a, there's a very old, old woman who is, who is kind of there, uh, and she's kind of leaning for support on the, on the, on the woman in front of her. And, and she's just like, I, I, I have, I have not developed any strange powers, but I, I heard that Felson had, had marvelous deals and I'm here for them. Yeah. Is this just a, a temporary a temporary sale? Uh, does this have to do with the all of the magic, do you think? She's like, I don't know about such things. I just I just really need a new tea set. <laughs> so the magic uh. is in the deals? That's a very odd <laughs> ability to have. <laughs> That, I like that it. That sounds like a, That sounds like a, an advertisement right there. The magic yeah. of the yeah. deals. <laughs> I didn't read it. It's a marketing okay? <laughs> I Secrets of magic clothes. out soon. <laughs> Let's see, what, did, what did we put on the back here? Seize yeah. the secret. That's not as good as uh, <laughs> as the magic and the deals. <laughs> <sighs> All right. What are we doing? Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. So, can uh, I do an arcana check on her, or an hmm, occult check on the, on the on the older woman? Yeah, to see like why is she not magical if everyone else is magical? Wait, that doesn't make any sense. Could you perception check, <laughs> investigation, investigation? Um, I mean, you can. You don't. So you you could make a check if you had an understanding of why people were getting these magical abilities, mm, but you haven't okay. figured that out yet. So okay. there isn't okay. really like why doesn't she have magical abilities? Mm -hmm, you don't know. Mm -hmm. it, it, you don't okay. know why anyone has magical abilities in this town, so, but everyone seems to be developing them. As we were gathering them, uh, is there any sort of pattern that emerges? Like there was a lot of prestidigitation or uh, like the growth would be more like druidic plant spells type of thing. Is there any sort of connection on, it's all seems very mundane magic. Yeah. Um, give me a, uh, give me an arcana check. And do. Well, all this is happening. Pharaoh's like, can I stop dancing now, please? <laughs> a dirty 20. <laughs> yes, Pharaoh, please so stop, please. You have you have no idea why um, these folks are getting their magic, but the one thing you can deduct from that that check is that it does seem like people are getting magic that makes their lives easier. That mm -hmm. that everyone is kind of getting magic that makes their everyday toils a little less burdensome. Mm -hmm. But you but, tell us that. Interesting. Has anyone I mean, had the, yeah. any problems after they had fallen asleep? Any reports from loved ones of silverware acting up or the garden <laughs> attacking? Has anyone else been murdered by their cutlery? Uh, right. <laughs> Raise your hand. Right, just ask this nice Ellis gentleman in the line here. He might be able right. to provide some insight. There's a guy with a fork well. and an eye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the the, <laughs> the Lord, he's like, I've seen it. <laughs> he 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 looks at all of your questioning and just you can you can see you can see him roll his eyes as he slowly tilts the parasol in such a way that he, you can't see his face anymore as he kind of turns away from you. And at that, the young boy comes back with a newly filled <sighs> flagon, and uh, he he <sighs> takes it from him, and then just kind of shoes the boy off. <laughs> oh, um, <good> service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nobody, nobody's like, no. Oh. Isn't the magic is a blessing, a blessing from the gods? And you hear somebody go, "I, I, it, it must be Nephis. He grants us his favor once more." And someone else is no, like, Nephis hasn't answered our prayers in centuries. It's Seren Ray who grants us these powers. It is her blessings that make our oh. life easier. And and all of a sudden, up and down the line, you start hearing some of the same rumors you heard last mm -hmm. night. 
that, oh, it was the phoenix that flew over the town. No, I heard it was that storm that was blown into the town by the divs. You know, there, mm-hmm. there's, you know, back and forth and back the and divs. forth. I, there's, yeah. Hashtag team bird. <laughs> <laughs> Which one will nope. win? <laughs> Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do a poll in the chat to find yeah, out uh, which storyline <laughs> I go poll in. in chat. <laughs> hmm. um, it seems to me that a lot of you know the gossip and a lot of uh, the magic even revolves around what people really want in their life or what they believe mm. in. So it's sort of like whatever it is they were wanting, they suddenly have gotten it. So it doesn't seem it- like it's a kind of magic word that that came from them innately. It's a kind of magic that grants wishes. It seems like one end of a bargain that is yet to be fulfilled. If they were granted this magic and it has made their life easier, it will be harder for them to give it up. Mm. If it they turns can't on sleep. them. Yes. yes. Dom, you had there something must be to something say? in return. Yes, there just hmm. must be something hmm. in return eventually. It's this too good to be question. true. That's one thing I learned down in the puddles. If something seems too good to be true, if there's all benefit and no what the hell are the puddles? Of... You, I love to bring that up. What are the puddles again? It, it's it's some. Oh. The 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 puddles. Um, if if you've spent any time in Absalom, and all of you have, the you puddles oh, no. is a <laughs> is a very rundown neighborhood in Absalom oh, called okay. the puddles because. It is so low that at high tide, parts of it flood. Ah. I just thought Dom was doing that thing where he's like, you know, that cool place I hang out in that you don't get to go to. <laughs> 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 Hachi, Hachi yeah. was like, and, what? <laughs> it's not that you don't get Anyone, to go there. It's just you don't choose to. Hmm. It's, so yeah, it's, it's that you wouldn't want to. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not even from around um, here. So like, honestly. <laughs> I Sorry even for not go knowing. To school, okay. <laughs> no, I'm from like the Kitsune clan outside of town. Like you don't even, you, none of you've been to my town, so right. Mm-hmm. Anyway, what I was saying is, um, yes, it seems like there is a magic with a price to be paid. Thank you for analyzing that correctly. Do you think uh, talking to this merchant would help us at all, or is this just another version of the same thing we're seeing all over town? Well, we could Probably. get in line. Yeah. Oh God. We're hiding something. I believe. Mm. All right, I'm gonna try one more thing before you. You. You know what? If you want to get in line, please. I'm gonna cast invisibility on myself. I can't deal with waiting in line. <laughs> <laughs> it's a second level spell, and I'm burning it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to go invisible. Go and, behind uh, the fountain or something. And yeah. uh, you're going to use that Downward to attempt to sneak in. That's correct. So, uh, while this has all been happening, a few more people <laughs> have been let in. We could just wait in the line this whole time instead of the sneaking in. The has been. <laughs> so, uh, while you're while you're standing there, um, the young boy comes and sits down next to the fountain, uh, kind of within earshot of the noble, and he's he's counting out his small stack of coins. Um, uh, Rostovan continues playing. The uh, the old woman is is looking at her pouch of coins uh, and and looking uh, forward to buying her tea set. And what do all of you do? Wait in line. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to wait in line. <laughs> How many <laughs> actions? <laughs> um, Feral, like, seeing, like, Hachi becoming visible and sneaking in, like, will try to, like, hide behind Fang and sneak in and then and then, like, see the the person at the door and like back away <laughs> with thing and get back in line with Ingot. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and, we'll uh, get in line. I'm, we'll get in line. Yeah, <laughs> Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's not much of a shopper anyway, so I'll wait in line. So, so Hachi, are you going to go invisible or are you going to wait in line? Uh, I'm going to go invisible. I'm not waiting in line. And you know what? Mm. I, I'll I'll, fi- I'll get I'll get you guys in. Don't worry. I'll figure it out. Uh-huh. <laughs> They're with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our friend's already That's in there. That's literally the only plan I have, yes. <laughs> our, our friends are already in there. No, they're waiting it's for a us. Wish, like, only... I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right. So, uh, Hachi, you go invisible, and the next time somebody goes in, you can easily slip in. Give me a stealth check. You are at a monstrous bonus on this. Okay. Monstrous. Monstrous. Uh, That is a 26. A 26. uh, Then on top of all the bonuses, yeah, you freely slip inside. So uh, go ahead and move your token inside. Uh, the rest of you, if you want to get yourself uh, in line at the end there, after after the old the old woman, mm-hmm. and she's like, "Oh, aren't you all sweet? Would one of you like? Would any of you like some candy?" And she opens up her her purse, and she's got like crystallized honey candy. <gasps> oh, I love rock like- candy. Ingot loves rock candy. <laughs> <laughs> this is totally oh, Ingot's here gem. You- <laughs> here you go. What? What's all of your names? <laughs> she's she's talking to all of you. Who who Inget. are all of you? I'm I'm Mother Tyreus. You can call me Mother Tyreus, or just Mother. All the children just call me Mother. Oh. I'm the one with the candy. <laughs> uh, nice to meet you, Ma. It's Don. Uh, Oh, you're all, you're all from, from, you're not from here, are you? You've traveled here from a long way. I suppose it's because of all the goings on. Well, enigmas from the College of Masters. <laughs> <laughs> I was I like, what's going on? I'm assuming it's yeah. your mouth full of candy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, oh, that's I, uh... nice. I've. I've heard about it. I've never left Zaltir, though. I've lived here my whole life. What? Is it a big city? It's a lot bigger than this one. Ah. Like uh... twice as big? (laughs) (laughs) A few more times bigger. Oh, so like five times as big. (laughs) Yes. Sure, we'll go with that. But you know, everything's that's very Everything's large. A lot big- Everyone's a lot bigger to me, so. Oh, Did well, you that's know? Fair. You, you are very wee, right. but that wolf of yours is very fierce. Oh no, he's not. In fact, he's actually he's just a big old teddy bear. And I, uh, I, I nudge Fang to kind of like stop giving his evil face and like put on his <laughs> nice <laughs> face. The puppy. Because you know yeah, he's always kind of gives- so. Yeah, he has like he has resting wolf face. And he puts on his puppy face, so like he'll he'll do like the the you know the puppy eyes, and then the kind of look up and like like a tilted head at her to kind of seem Aww. less. Uh, yeah, she she, plus, she kind plus of he very, wants the candy. <laughs> she she very gently reaches out and and strokes his nuzzle a little and then offers him a piece of candy and he, he, he wolfs it down. Hand. I'm just kidding. Mm. <laughs> you gotta go! <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Roll initiative! <laughs> no, no! No! So <laughs> against poor Mother Tyreus. Oh, you monsters. All right, we can take uh, her! We can take her! <laughs> so all of this is just filled up because Hachi is snuck inside. So... Right. Uh, so, Hachi, you have managed to sneak inside the place. Um, and, uh, you've made your way inside. You notice that, uh, the shop has, you know, an assorted assortment of goods kind of scattered all throughout. There are racks and shelves all over the place, crates and boxes. It doesn't look like a particularly well-organized shop. There's some large stuffed beast in the corner. Um, there's armoires and chests and barrels all over the place. Um, piled up all over. Uh, although, frankly, it looks like it's been pretty picked through already here today, is all these incredibly fine goods. You see, you know, d- a precious silk ropes with, like, different colored silk threads woven through them and, and and uh, you know, gold tassels at the end. You see velvet draperies, you know, with fine embroidery. There's tapestries. There's mugs. There's cups. There's... It's mostly housewares, um, but there are some things that an adventurer might find uh, of interest. Um, uh, nothing, nothing amazing, but there are like, you know, some emerald encrusted goblets. Another nice parasol. There's a dragon scale cape. Um, mm-hmm. It looks like there's a deck of silver 
uh, edged and etched hero cards. Mm -hmm. There's even a ruby studded collar uh, for a dog or a beast of some sort. These seem like tailored right. items. <laughs> <laughs> One might say. Yeah. Um, well, Oz, um, I'm going to. I want to detect magic on one of just any of these items and just triple check that this is made. These things were made using magic. Okay, so uh, detect magic. What that's going to do for you at your level, because you're not quite high enough level to get super specific knowledge. But what mm -hmm. it does do is it tells you that there is. Um, powerful magic in this area, and it is illusion magic. Uh-oh. F. <laughs> <laughs> um, this makes Hashi very annoyed. As a merchant with pride in what we sell and trade and buy, this is a clear violation of the rules. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little sneaky. I'm gonna see if I can investigate uh because this this person there's some someone blocking right here, right? So yeah, um, there are two incredibly large, beefy looking guards uh in guards. this place. And then yeah, you've got one here and one over here. Everyone else in here is uh a townsfolk, and then of course you also have Felzon uh behind the 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 ledger there who is uh, bringing uh -oh. folks up and, and charging them for their, their valuables um, and selling them various goods. Um, so you got those two. Um, so yes, Felzan is like, yes, that is a marvelous piece. Yes, yes. Why, that's only, that is only three silver pieces. That, oh no, those, that, that whole set is one silver piece per cup. But I'll, I'll cut two silver if you take the lot of six, right? And he's just, uh, you know, his big giant cat paws are scooping up co uh, coppers and silvers and, and putting them in the till uh, as more and more folks come and buy more and more things. I am going to take out a little pad of paper that I just happen to have in a tiny quill. I write mm -hmm. a note. It's just a note. It's fine. Uh, it says, I know what you're up to and you know it's wrong. I fold it up. And I want to see if I can sneak just that piece of paper, like right in front of where um, he is, and then just kind of back up and see if there's any reaction. That sounds haunted. Um. Okay. Well, let me go <laughs> ahead and roll a. Oh. This is deep. This here. is a, a deception of the small of the small paper matter. So I assume it'd be easier than deceiving <laughs> to be talking to him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he doesn't immediately notice it. He's in the middle of a transaction and he doesn't <laughs> notice it right away. Um, okay. But your uh, invisibility uh, ha only has a duration of 10 minutes. So you've yeah. already been in here for several minutes watching transactions okay. and kind of looking at uh, the various folks that come and go. So your time is a little limited. What do you want to do? Uh, before I leave, I want to cast Dispel Magic <laughs> on whatever is being uh, whatever is being like bought right now, or something that someone's holding in their hand right now, and then I'm gonna go. Ooh. Okay, let me let me check a thing real quick. <laughs> yeah, I know it's complicated. I wonder if that breaks your invisibility. Oh, yeah, for... that's true. Actually, yeah, Let's that's see. what I was thinking. Well, because it might be a concentration. Though. Let me check. That's a good move. I want to see it happen. <laughs> me too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so invisibility only lasts as long as you do not take any hostile actions. Uh -huh. um, I don't believe I don't believe dispel magic on an object qualifies. Yeah! Um, Benevolence! Do it, how, do it, do how it. ever, uh, that doesn't mean you're out of the clear, because Dispel Magic does require both somatic and verbal components. The somatic gotcha. components are fine, because you're invisible. However, the verbal components can't be whispered. They have to be spoken. 
which means they will be very easy for everyone to hear. <laughs> so, okay. if you tried to dispel magic something that somebody had in their possession or were wearing, that would probably be hostile. But if you target it while it's just sitting on the counter because they're, they're haggling over it, that's probably your only window. But the right. verbal components are still going to get you. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. So I'm not that this benevolent. <laughs> Chat thinks uh -oh. I'm being way too nice on all of you. I want you to know that. Uh, there uh, are no. You don't make Chat in this house. Because um, <laughs> I'll do it all. Uh, Hachi's going to like skedad, like right, right here. So I can still, I don't know if that's on, on something. Just so I can still see the object, but also so I'm very close to the door. And I'm just going to mm. go for it. I'm just going to like be invisible and yell. <laughs> And then, you know, whatever happens, happens. Like, when it's Pathfinder, what could possibly happen? <laughs> it's Pathfinder, what could possibly happen? <laughs> no, 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 I'll hey! never. <laughs> so, Ray. so, you can't, Hachi, you can't exactly stand in that corner because there's this statue. Yeah. It's not really a statue. It's like a, one of those hollow suits of armor oh, that's okay. standing in the corner there. And okay. if you go there, you will probably knock it over, which would make a whole bunch of noise. <laughs> I'm next to it. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> okay. Um. And I yell. I do my little yell. <laughs> this spell! Magic. All right. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, let's go ahead and have you roll the uh, dispel check. All right. <clears throat> Ooh, uh, that is plus my... Let's see. Du -du 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 -du. Uh, that is a dirty 20. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, chaos! Chaos in the so, store! <laughs> let's see. Uh, da, 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 there it is. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> you uh, uh, move to uh, uh, dispel the magic around uh, this uh, illusion, or thing that you think is an illusion, and after finishing casting the spell, uh, first of all, it's going to make a bunch of noise, so I'm going to go ahead and roll for one of my guards to see if they oh. notice you. Oh, that's oh. not good. <laughs> I oh, bounced yeah. an 18, which is going to come out to a 30. Oh. Wow. This guard right over here immediately looks at the space where you are at, grabs the his sword, and moves forward. Oh, no. Um, okay, I'm fine. And whatever you just attempted to do to the object did not yield any <gasps> result that you can see. Oh, so it was not magical. Uh oh. You don't know? I don't know. Or it was oh, too I see. low. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know That's if it was high enough. You don't know if. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try to run away, I guess. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, go ahead and you know what? Here, let's do this. Why don't you go ahead and bounce me a stealth check okay. as your initiative, and I'm going to bounce oh. my perception as initiative, and we're going to see who goes first. I don't like this this very much, but I did dig myself into oh, this no. tiny hole. Um, stealth, stealth. I, okay. I rolled very oh. poorly, so what did you mm. get? Uh, okay, uh, it's plus 10. 27? 27. All right, so this guard walks over, draws his really large scimitar, and is, like, reaching forward to your space just as you back out the door, and someone outside was kind of opening it. You leaned into it and just rolled right out the door oh. and were able to get away before the guard was able to grab you. The guard, Jeez. not knowing what was even there, kind of, okay. you see him kind of get to that spot and kind of poke around with the scimitar, but doesn't see anything. I don't you do anything. I was going to do something stupid, stupid, but I'm going to just leave. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. And I, I, re I reconvene with my part. Uh, I go here. I uninvisible. Uh, and then I, okay. I kind of I kind of wait. You know? we've waiting in line. So you 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 go right over near the window oh, where right. the guard is standing. Oh, well, I can't tell where this window is. First of all, <laughs> what am I? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> yeah there, there's, 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 there's windows all around the outside of the building. Okay, um, I, I I'm a gym. I'm a witch, not an architect. <laughs> well, then I, I would just, I would just go to the group and sort of hide in their, in their kind oh, embrace. Sure. And it's, it's, there's plenty of there's plenty of buildings just off the map's edge too. You can you can run away and and become visible and then come and rejoin them. That's not that's not hard. Sure. Um, okay, so okay, you went back and joined sorry. the party. <laughs> just as just as uh, you know, more folks are going in, more folks are going out. Um, we're we're at the point now where the 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 chelish uh, noble has just sent the boy back to refill his tankard <laughs> once again. Uh, as he is, is now he... at the front of the line. Trash? I, I want to walk like... up to him. I, you I'm don't think he's drinking alcohol? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Wait, uh, what? He's not drinking alcohol? It's juices. You're not sure what's in the tankard, but if he was drinking palm wine, he'd be passed out by now. <laughs> I have a feeling he's drinking something, but I'm going to chew another leaf and hand it to him. He's like, this is for your migraine that you're sure to have later. Since I have a feeling he's drinking alcohol, and he's probably going to be hungover or in pain he, later. He kind of looks at you with this with a sneer, and he's like, oh, "Well, don't worry. I don't believe I'll be needing that. Us, uh, us fegs do not have need for such things. We can handle our liquor quite well, just like you handled that silverware last night." And then I just pop it back in my mouth and walk back to the group. Oh, he looks at you, and he's like. Yes, quite well. <laughs> yes, I was just regaling, and he goes back to talking to the person behind him. How last oh, no. night I saved the drowsy camel. How I defeated ah. uh, a statue and saved the establishment. Yes, all one of the many services us loyal, chelish uh, natives can provide. Yes, and he's just talking up the, the the honors and the 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 valors of of Cheliax, which you know just to make sure everybody understands Cheliax is the nation ruled by devils <laughs> and people who make deals with devils so not exactly a good place this guy doesn't look like a great person tell me how long have you been in town Oh, he's talking to someone else, but whatever. Well, you can go talk to him. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in line. <laughs> he's like, I was sent here uh, several weeks ago to investigate the goings on here. It's all of interest to the folks in Agorian. They are interested in learning about what is happening in this town. Uh, I, I said I, you could send someone of my noble stature here to investigate this fine town, but you could you could just as easily send a scribe or something, but they insisted that I go investigate it myself. I could understand I am perhaps one of the more learned scholars on, on these matters in, in, in Igorian, so... Well, and you, so are, by the way, did your, your group <laughs> came from... Where? Absalom? Yes. Uh, enigmas <laughs> from the College ah. of Mysteries in Absalom. How mysterious. Well, it, it I am, seems as... I am, Vin, I am Vintarius Feg. Aha. Yeah. Ingot is Ingot. A uh, pleasure. We'll, we will just... We will dispose of my proper titles. I don't believe anyone here will be calling me Count anytime soon. Hmm. Uh, well, it, it it seems as though a lot of the magics that are occurring are wish granting, and this seems hmm. to be maybe your area of expertise. Ah, uh, well, I I am quite powerful and a skilled practitioner myself, but. I am Obviously. no wish maker, hmm. but I have known those who can grant such things. I, you know, I thought that was a possibility too when I arrived, Good. but I quickly moved on to other theories. Oh, Ingrid is sorry for bringing up a sore subject. No, not sore at all. You're free to believe whatever nonsense the locals try to peddle to you. <laughs> 
uh, money is on the Maybe bird you'll theory. go hunting for the phoenix. They sent an entire <laughs> group after them last week. Oh, oh, oh. Have you heard about the bird? <laughs> He's like, yes, good luck finding it. I hear it's I hear it's lost somewhere deep in the desert. <laughs> he, I look at Fang the, the, and I'm at, like, we have homework. <laughs> at that, the door opens and the, uh, the garden side is like, next. And uh, Ventarius uh, looks to the rest of you and he says, I'll make sure to leave you something. A bauble or two. And he goes it's walking all, inside. It's all trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I everyone, don't, like don't know if I... Yes, he's... That person is trash also. Um, mm. where we can do something to him later. We know where he's sleeping at night. Um, but uh, everything in that room, apparently, in that shop, appears to be enchanted, I think. Um, so that it looks more fancy than it is. It's an illusion spell. Mm. Devious. Which means this catfolk person is ripping people off, and I can't abide by that. Hmm. Well, um, the the afternoon, it's it's now early afternoon by the time uh, <laughs> the line finally thins out. You've been out here for a couple hours now. Uh, the line does not move quickly. People go inside and spend their time looking at all the wondrous wares uh, that they might purchase. And uh, after a bit, uh, uh, Mother uh, Mother Tyreus finally goes inside to look for her tea set. And uh, I know. Uh, when she does, uh, Ventarius comes out with uh, a bauble or two that he's picked up. Uh, and he quickly hides them away inside of his... He's wearing like one of those kind of pretentious half cloaks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he kind of spirits it away in there and, and makes his hey, way across and he's like he's like come on boy I have more chores for you and the young the young boy chases after him holding his you know small pile of copper um, I, yell, I yell after him enjoy your trash <laughs> he, uh, and I look he at looks Hachango. back at you with a bit of a snarl <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, he just kind of looks back at you all with a bit of a snarl and makes his way uh, 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 back across uh, to the drowsy camel. Um, so, at this point in time, uh, kind of the rest of you are let inside. Go ahead and remove some of the locals because they've all finished their shopping. Oh, finally some air conditioning. It's been hours <laughs> in the sun. Will that work? <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. So, uh... You know, feel Do free to allow, go ahead and head in? inside. Your positioning probably doesn't matter, but we'll we'll let you move we'll yourself see. around as you see fit. Uh, yeah, we'll see. They, uh, they allow Fang <laughs> inside, right? They allow Fang inside. Um, yeah. I mean, they don't yeah. they don't really make a thing of it. They're just you know, uh, yeah. Felsod when he sees the the wolf come padding in, he kind of goes, "That thing's house trained, right?" Um. More forest trained, but if you mean that, if you if he'll obey me, if that's what you mean. Well, as long as he doesn't make any messes. <laughs> oh no, he's, he's very of... clean, and I and I pet him, and as I pet him, dust flies off of him. He's <laughs> <laughs> like ah, ah. Feel free to take a look around. We've been we've been relatively picked over, but there'll be more tomorrow, I'm sure. Uh, I get supplies in every day. Oh, is that so, um, Felsan? Where do you get your supplies from every day? Do tell. I am also uh, a fellow merchant like yourself. He's like, oh, I, uh, I have contacts far and wide. Some come from as far away as Tian Sha and Arcadia and beyond, and they bring wondrous goods to Felsan's shop. Yes. I hate how Felsan talks, but um. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Another character with a slappable face. Um, <laughs> oh no! Oh no! It's a kitty. Um, He's perfect. Okay. I wonder. Perfect. Mm. Okay. Sorry. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take any of you guys. Do what you want to do first. Mm. Uh, Ingit is gonna look around and examine what's left. Uh, is there still like that dragon scale cloak? 
Yes. Yeah, it's very nice. Mm. Um, you go and, and take a look at it. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it looks like it was harvested from a uh, blue dragon. Um, has uh, uh, very very large blue scales down around the hem, uh, going up to kind of smaller, finer scales up towards the the shoulders and the clasp. It has silver clasps um, that look very finely made to look like a uh, small dragon claws. Um, cool. It's it's very very nice, very fine. Uh, as as you begin kind of trying it on and looking at it, mm. uh, Felzan crawls out from behind the counter. He's like, ah, yes, <laughs> a very wondrous fine. Yes, yes, came from came from a, a beast that was slain uh, far in the deserts to the west out in you... Rahadum. Yes, you, yes. You are a very fine strong. Piece, a fine piece. I will, I will let you have it for but Eight silver pieces, yes, yes. A bargain. Quite, quite, yes. Felzan is very generous, yes, yes. <laughs> Sold. And Ingot has eight silver at least, so. Oh, yeah, no, we'll absolutely. Buy this cloak. Yeah, yeah. All right. You now have a, uh, a, a blue dragon scale cloak. Great. Beautiful trash. <laughs> Can I yeah. investigate? What ones yeah. Ingot has it in in uh, his hands? I'd like to investigate the uh, the see if it's real because maybe some of these things are real. All I'm right. dumb. <laughs> All right, uh, you you go and start handling it. Uh, give me a perception check. Ingot's um, doing twirls. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that is a, a dirty twenty. This is a lot. Really great. Seems nice. Seems well made, well wrought. The scales are are well uh, well oiled and taken care of. It, it's a nice cloak, very fancy. Um, give me a mercantile lore. Oh, again. Come on, mercantile lore. This is uh, sixteen plus twelve is twenty eight. This he got this for a steal. Eight silver. This thing's probably worth ten gold, at least. Mm. Something's weird. Yes, yes, is yes, and uh, he, he, Don Don Doomy sees you over near the Harrow deck because I'm assuming just you're over near the up. deck of cards. <laughs> I was just about to ask about it. I was just about to try I, to scope that out. Just I don't I'm just know why. A guess here. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yes, yes. finest. Finest cards all the way from Varicia. Yes. Yes. Very mm. nice. Belson will gladly part with them for only only five silver. Yes. Five silver. And I see the silver uh, foil around the sides. This isn't the, uh, the, the gold edition, which I'd prefer. But uh, <laughs> let me just take a look. One moment. By all and, means, uh, buy the goods. They are they are of the finest quality. Mm. Let's see. Haggling even for the bargain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh... but but looking closer, I like to cast a, a, a cantrip to see if I can do anything here with a read aura. Um, I just want to see, you know, if it's. I mean, determine what the school of magic is. You know, if it's magic, or if it's an illusion as well. Okay, um, so I'm pulling a breed order here. Um, okay, you learn if it is. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a cantrip. So for you, it's automatically heightened to third level. Um, mm -hmm. I love this music. <laughs> it's the shop music. Yeah. Let's check in the thing. Okay. Um, all right. So you cast uh, uh, Read Aura, and uh, you don't really sense anything. Seems uh, okay. seems legit. Okay. Yes, these are these are these are very nice. Um, and your price is fair. I shall take them. Yes. Yes. A very reasonable price. Yes, Belzon is happy cards, to, yes. to oh. part with these. I, I, I shall get... You said you wanted the gold edition. Perhaps come back 
in, in, in a few days' time, and I will see what I can do. Ooh. Interesting. I've already put, <laughs> I've already put the ruby uh, collar on Fang. <laughs> <laughs> it's already on him. Bill sounds like, yes, yes, a wondrous, wondrous, wondrous collar. Very nice. Very fine rubies. Highest quality. Yes, comes from Osirian. Yes, made to made to made to add style and and glorious fashion to any beast. Ah, yes. Ah, uh, how about six silver pieces? Yes, for the rubies, of course. They're very valuable. Uh, <laughs> I I take them off, and he's like, "It's a little too fancy for me and Fang. Do you by chance have anything a little less?" Shiny. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Everything only, is too nice. <laughs> only fine wares at Falzans. If you want, if you want a dirty leather strap, you can get that at any place, but not Falzans. <laughs> oh, that's that's a shame because I was hoping this could be like a one-stop shop, but. And we well, could all get what we needed here. And now, and now I'm just very upset. You could let it get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm not really a fan of the, of jewels and all. But are you sure you don't have anything else in the back or something? I, I'd hate to go uh, somewhere else. I'd have to leave you a bad review on the town uh, board. <laughs> board and board, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On the Zaltir Yelp. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which no, is just a uh, message board, literally, outside. Yeah, it's, of the um, and it's if literally I, just a wood think, board. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, I'm trying to see if I can do some kind of... I don't think intimidation would come into play here. Basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if he can, like... If he would take this and like go in the back or something and come back with something more, I'm trying to test him to see if like if yeah. he's causing these illusions, if he's willing to, you know, all of a sudden is have the customer that always right? He's, yeah, he's exactly. Like, I'm being a Karen. <laughs> he's, he's, he's like, no, no, no goods, no goods. But but tomorrow, tomorrow, I could I could try and get something less nice. Perhaps well, I'm I've kind of dirty, like you, maybe with leaves. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, old chap, hey. we've been very patient with you, and um, my friend wants something different, and that's what she'll get one day. But uh, I must ask you: Are you really getting these things from far and away, as you're saying, or are you getting them from a magical person, perhaps even yourself? I'm just asking you straight up. Many, many merchants, many traveling merchants sell wondrous wares to Felza. Yes. All right. Yes. I'm going to try. Yes. And the, the bend of the rules, so feel free to say no. Um, because this cantrip Bane, by description, says you fill the minds of your enemies with doubt. Oh. Now, the actual effect of the spell is that it's like a will save and they have penalty to attack rolls and all this stuff. But that first line, mm -hmm. you fill the enemies with doubt. Could I use it in the scenario to just make him doubt himself and his confidence? <laughs> um, Bane isn't gonna quite do what you wanted to do. I mean, I know it, it says that they're filled right. with doubt, but it's more like doubt on their combat abilities. Um, you're you're more looking for something to give him like a frightened effect or or like make him shaken. You know, just just make it, which is frightened. Uh, I, I keep forgetting we rolled that in. Ah, uh, so <laughs> yeah, you're you're looking for something to kind of shake his 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 resolve. Um, and Bane is Bane is mostly about combat. So um, yeah, okay, I thought I'd give it a shot. <laughs> yeah. Question. Like, yes, in yes. The... Yes. Oh, this is more of a question for you, Jason. But I guess I can. Oh. <laughs> is there anything in the store? <laughs> is there anything in the store that's like? plant like a, a rare plant life or anything like that that would be like an exotic flower from no, another it's, region it's 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 all, all it's all like durable goods it's all like ropes and pitchers and teacups and you know stuff like that it's 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 not it's not food it's not any plants ooh. it's not yeah it's nothing 
consumable perishable. or disposable. Yeah. I could what about fear? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, okay, what about something like a, some kind of fancy weapon or something? I, oh, ah, I don't know. Weapons were, probably... we weapons were sold this morning, but I will have more tomorrow. <sighs> I'm trying to okay. I'm trying to bend the rules too. <laughs> um, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, the the place is uh, the, you are now some of the only customers left. The whole town, everyone who is coming to shop here is now shopped here already. Listen, it's now we waited in line like, and we will take as long as we want. Okay, <laughs> it's now like mid afternoon, um, and he's like, "Yes, yes, well, take your." Take your time, I guess. <laughs> oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Because okay. I'm telepathically connected with Fang, correct? Yeah. Okay. Well, in that, in that you can share senses with Fang, like you can yeah. kind of lose your oh. own sight to look through Fang's eyes, you know, that I sort of thing. I think in, I'm pretty sure in Act Together, hold on. I, I'm telepathically connected to him. So if I maybe... Yeah, the, um, yeah, the two of you can guess, kind of yeah. share... We can it's communicate like telepathically. Talk, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, so I guess I can't be like, go here. Okay. Uh, well, then I'll just do it. I won't have Fang do it. I'll just do it. Uh, I'm going to accidentally hit a table and knock something down and break it. <laughs> um... What? Uh, so there's like there's like vases and a fancy, plates like and... a fancy vase, yeah, a fancy vase. Okay, all right. It's a vase. <laughs> if it's fancy, sorry, <laughs> it's a vase. I'm gonna knock over a vase. Uh, so I'm trying to see if like if it is an illusion, if like it breaking it will break the illusion, that type of thing. So oh, clumsy me! I forgot to wear my shoes, and then I fall and hit a vase. And <laughs> shoes. Okay. I want it to shatter. Right. So. So you uh you uh go over to uh you can you can head over to the shelves over here. There's like shelves right there. Um and uh let's see, she's already left and he's left <laughs> and yeah, it's pretty much just you guys now. <laughs> um that's fine. Uh so you uh you make your way over there and you bump into a shelf to knock a a vase off of the counter and it uh, rolls it rolls for a second and Felsan goes no be careful and then it <laughs> falls off and when it hits the ground and shatters well two things happen one uh -oh. it breaks it just kind of shatters into a whole bunch of pieces oops uh, that's the first thing that happens second thing that happens is uh Whatever glamour was on this thing, whatever powerful glamour that prevented you all from seeing through it, the moment it breaks, that ends. And nice, what was Pharaoh. a porcelain, gold, filigreed, you know, fancy base, it shatters and turns into a worthless clay pot. I immediately start probably, knocking everything off. <laughs> it is ah! probably worth a copper or two. And... <laughs> The as soon as that happens, as soon as that happens, Ingot rip, rips off the cloak and then tries to like tear it. <laughs> you you rip it and it it surprisingly for a dragon scale cloak <laughs> isn't very sturdy because the, oh. it's it's oh. you rip it and it promptly turns into a burlap. A sack that's just been tied around your shoulders. <laughs> just a piece of trash. Ingot and, has oh, been deceived. No. You're well, with me. Destroy what? it. Yep. What are you, what are you yeah, doing? Yeah, Don. He's just gonna he's just gonna produce flame with this with this <laughs> deck of cards in his hand. And it burns up, and you quickly realize it was nothing but a cheap half half their suit of cards. It was just a piece of trash. It was nothing, and. Um. Uh, Hachi was right. Hachi, you you doing anything? I I yeah. I was I was waiting for a pause. I I walk up to the counter. I tap my note, and I open it up. <laughs> and he 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 looks down and opens it up. And the the final thing that happens is he looks at all of you and he says, 
You're going to regret that! Guards! Kill them! Oh my god, not again. Is where we are going to end today's ah! game. I'm like, I in mid, I'm in mid play for a, like. <laughs> <laughs> it was this, the party is in the everything. middle of destroying this place, shattering the oh, whole yeah. thing. <laughs> but Felsan will have none of it. You will have to face off against his guards next week. But before we go, I want to toss it around the horn and let everybody uh, tell you where you can find where you can find them on the internet. Uh, before we get going here, uh, Xander, we'll start with you. Yes, I'm Xander Genre. You can find me at Xanderific with two R's and one F. My main hub is Twitter, but I also stream here on Twitch all the time. Uh, check out my Twitter for my schedule. I'm storytelling every night of the week of at some point. <laughs> Aren't we all these days? It's true. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Michelle. Hi, I'm Michelle and Bradley. You can find me on the internet at I am Chubby Bunny um, on Twitter and all that good stuff. Uh, you can find me here every Wednesday, obviously, and you can find me over on Hunter's Entertainment's Twitch channel on Tuesdays. Usually, I'm on a little break right now because got some things going on. Um, and uh, coming up in a month and some change, you can find me at Gen Con. Is what it's called. I forgot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, awesome. London. Oh, you're muted. I was given the whole <laughs> spiel there. I felt so uh, good. Yeah. Was it looked good. <laughs> it was crisp. Yeah. No. Hi, I'm London Carlisle. Um, you can find me on Twitter at London Carlisle or here on Twitch at Spot Hidden, which is a show that I run with my friends. Um, we have some um, World War II cosmic horror every Sunday. Uh, mm. So check that out. Um, but in the meantime, follow at London Carlisle on Twitter for all the latest news and updates. So I'll see you next week. Bonnie. And hello, everyone. Yes, hi, everyone. I'm Bonnie Gordon. You can find me all over social media everywhere at Bonnie Bell G. Also, check out my comedy parody band that I have with Xander, the Library Bards. Woo! Hey. At Library Bard. Uh, I'm streaming on random channels. You can find me on Mondays on Q Times uh, on the Star Trek TT RPG show called Clear Skies. You can find this me here on Wednesdays. Now, Go though. figure. <laughs> what? This is our what? thing now, though. Not Star Trek. <laughs> I don't, oh, I don't yeah. think you can take that from Star Trek. I think they got that Watch on lock. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll workshop it. And then, uh, yeah, and, uh, and I'm performing a lot of solo music lately. Uh, check out my socials. I'll be posting more online soon. <laughs> And I am your host. I'm Jason Bullman. I'm the uh, director of game design at Paizo. You can find me at all the various social media platforms at backslash Jason Bullman. That's J-A-S-O-N-B-U-L-M-A-H-N. I hope you will tune in next week on Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time for another exciting episode of Secrets of Magic. If you've missed this or any other episode, you can catch it over at the Paizo YouTube channel pretty easy to find. Just go to YouTube and look for Paizo. And I hope you are all as excited as I am to get Secrets of Magic out to Ooh, all of you. We've got a, just a copy or two that we've gotten from our Yay. printer. Uh, the, the whole shipment isn't expected until, uh, uh, I believe, August. So uh, we're excited for you all to get your hands on this exciting book. God, there's so oh. much good stuff in here. Just look at that. It's gorgeous. This Ooh. book is gorgeous. And you know what's even more gorgeous? The special Me? edition. Look Ooh. at that cover. It's fantastic. I got to move it in the right way because I can't see. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we hope that you are all as excited for this book as we are to get it out to you. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a great time here tonight. Thank you to this wonderful cast. You all did a great job. And we will see you next week, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>